Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck to Simmer live stream today. It's the 5th of March, uh, 2020. We're coming in from Aberdeen and we are going in our first ever turboprop in a Flight Deck to Simmer live stream. We have installed the uh, Dash... I keep saying Dash. Why do I keep calling it the Dash 8? It's the De Havilland Canada Twin Otter. Uh, by RW Designs, uh, an aircraft which I've been uh, wanting to fly for quite a while. I've been keeping an eye on this one at the X-Plane store. Um, and I was uh, all out of ideas of what where to take this aircraft um, as well. I spent the whole day trying to get this installed correctly and working. Uh, I was going to go northbound from Scotland to uh, the Faroe Islands. Then I was going to do some Caribbean island hopping. Then I was going to go to Mount Everest. And I just thought, you know what? There is a, a real-world route where this aircraft goes, and that is from Glasgow to Barra. And it's uh, quite interesting because it's the only airport in the world, I think the only uh, airport in the world that has commercial flights, which lands on an, uh, a sandy runway, or a runway made out of sand or a beach, uh, we should say. So I thought that would be a pretty cool flight to replicate. So we're not going to go from Glasgow this year. We're actually in Aberdeen. We're going to go uh, southwest towards Glasgow. Flight of about 45 minutes. And then we're going to go northwest towards Barra. So two sections today. This is sort of the 40,000 subscriber uh, flight uh, that we're going to uh, um, celebrate sort of a way of doing it. I, was gonna, I had so much on this week, which I didn't have much else to plan. Um, on doing, I really wanted to do Concorde, but I just didn't, I want an aircraft I really need to practice it. But, uh, lo and behold, I installed this, I've had no practice flying it whatsoever. I just slewed it up to about uh, 10,000 feet to take the picture for the screenshot of this video, and that's it. <laughs> so it'll be a good learning experience for myself and you guys watching, I've no doubt uh, you'll enjoy it. It's worthwhile mentioning, I see a lot of people in chat saying, you know, rest in peace for Flybe. Yeah, very sad day today. Uh, Flybe went into administration late last night. We kind of watched it unfold, really. Um, I've got some good friends who work for the airline who I spoke to today, and they're obviously distraught and devastated. It's a, it's a real shame. Um, I, I uh, became a captain last year, and I relied on the Flybe service to get to my, my base each week. So it's a great shame to see them go, and I hope my friends and colleagues, um, I wish them the best, and I hope they can really quickly get themselves sorted and the job um it's awful times at the moment really in the aviation industry uh we've got coronavirus uh, happening demand the max has obviously been grounded for nearly a year now it's uh it's not ideal really uh so it's a great shame and i just hope there's some fluidity i hope coronavirus gets sorted firstly and uh, the industry gets going anyway sidetracked away from the stream today great to see some of the new uh, members here chris lionheart has just joined as a member last stream all the other usual members brian kruger's here uh, he says uh, is it a nude beach i uh, wouldn't think at this time of the year um we're live weather we are 12 hours minus live time so it's 8 36 here in the evening in the uk it's actually 8 36 in the morning in the sim but i don't expect to see any nudists anywhere <laughs> this time of year on the scottish beach there uh Serge B's coming in from shanghai and uh indrik's coming in from turkey although he's got to bed he says because it's uh, going past half 11 but uh, thanks for popping in nonetheless at the start so yeah here we are I really wanted to go in the Fly B uh, livery for this aircraft. They do have one, but they've updated this flight model since then. So unfortunately, um, I couldn't use the Fly B livery, which would have been quite fitting today. So I've actually gone in for the Logan Air. It's based off a real aircraft. Uh, I think it's Golf Sierra, Golf Tango Sierra. Uh, and this is, um, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool livery. It's quite representative of where we're flying today, obviously, with the, the Scottish uh, Scottish livery here. Yeah, and we're in Aberdeen at the moment. Stand one. It's a default one i i was going to look at installing one but i read the ex the um the uk 2000 one isn't that great so i just stuck with the default one the glasgow's ad sparks and then barra we've installed a freeway one for that as well so yeah let's jump into the cockpit i have no idea why it's really silent here like this aircraft seems to have erased all the background immersion noise so all you've got is my lovely voice i'm afraid there's no kind of background airport noises or anything like that which is a bit of a pain um really have no clue what I'm doing so let's get rid of this <laughs> to start with which is everything you want to hear at the start of a stream isn't it um and I did install this x checklist thing for this aircraft so let's do that as well um so prior to this stream what I did do um was load up the aircraft with fuel um I put nine passengers on just to make sure the weight balance is all correct. And fuel wise, I've just gone for full tanks <laughs> just because it's the easiest thing to do. I've no idea what the endurance or range is for this aircraft. I'd say about a thousand nautical miles or so. Uh, that should do us fine for these flights today. And we'll see how much fuel we have in Glasgow before we load up anything there. I put nine passengers on board just to get the CG right in the middle. 
Um, uh, regarding the question there, Captain Nicholas Falk, which airline are you working for? Very common question in my uh, live streams that's something I don't disclose, and I'm sure one of my moderators will fill you in if you keep asking that question as well. Um, so that is loaded up. Um, well, imagine we're boarding, which wouldn't obviously take this long here, but yeah, look at this. This model is beautiful in here, really nice. Uh, all the engine controls are up here on the up overhead panel. Um, I don't have flown a turboprop. I mean, fuel, I guess it's just off and on, isn't it? But they have two fancy big red levers here nonetheless. Um, I've pre-assigned some views. Uh, right, anyway, let's get things plugged in. Uh, introduction next. Right, it's doing all these checks for us here. Happy days. Oh, all right, brilliant. Uh, what, what do I have to do? Ignition switch to normal. All right, where's that? I did, I did have a little look on, so I do know where some of the stuff is. Right, let's put that in normal. DC master switch on. Uh, electrical switch battery. So I'll put that to battery. Uh, fire detection test. Uh, where's the fire handles? Oh, again, all the uh, all these aircraft that we don't fly, that's not the seven three seven, have like school bell fire tests. Uh, fuel quantity checked. We've got a full tank of gas. Um, my apologies for, again. Project Fly, the overlay is not working again. I have it all installed as I always do. It's running in the background. I am on the project. Um, overlay map but it's just not working the overlay again it it stopped working about three weeks ago then it is working uh, and then it's stopped uh, so yeah sorry about that i'll keep you um i'll keep you uh, advised on our progress anyway uh fly instruments check then yeah uh what's the latest weather here it's lovely now um it's nice to see a back of some of these storms i've got the met off at every single airport it's completely clear skies up in scotland no wind clear skies it's, it's really good because we're going to really enjoy the ortho over scotland today uh, right now in Aberdeen, variable winds, 1 degree, QNH is 9 and 9 at 8 hectopascals. Now, what's that in... Oh, God, it's all this... Oh, I need to work it this out. I've got a table here in front of me. 9 and 9 at 8 uh, in inches of mercury. What is that? It's uh, 2947. 2947. And that should give us the elevation here. Uh, in Aberdeen, which is uh, 217 feet. Yeah, that looks about right. Perfect. God, why can't I have my uh, Q&H here? It's probably a way of changing the settings. But flight instruments, we'll imagine they're checked. Radio 1 and 2, ordered set. Right, uh, you'll see here prior to stream, I put direct to Glasgow already in here. But we're going to fly a conventional SID, and then I IFR rules the whole way. Um... I've got a little flight plan filed on Sim Brief. So radios one and two on and set. So how do we turn these on? It's been a while since I've seen one like this. On, on, transponder set. Pushback and start clearance obtained. Do we get a pushback in this aircraft? Or surely you could just turn on the spot. Well, we won't bother with a pushback today. Sorry, it's so quiet here. Sorry about that, guys. We need some immersion of background noises. Right, anti collision light on. Uh, let's get the engine started. Then we'll look at the flight plan, get everything warmed up. Uh, so anti collision light is on. Fuel levers off, propeller levers high RPM. So I've changed all my joystick buttons now. So I've got pitch here and, well, this was mixture, but I don't think it is. I think it's just fuel off and on. Not sure about that one. Um, after boost pump on, that's down here. Uh, forward boost pump on, that doesn't make any noise. Right fuel lever on, on. Start right engine. Is that it? So start check engine RPM increases. Left fuel lever on engine start. So it's simple. I, I mean, it's just a jet engine essentially. Right, let's start the engine, and then we'll talk about the rest uh, as well. Uh, where is it? Start right engine. <laughs> there we go. Ah, better shut all the doors as well. Ah, uh, I need to shut the shut the back door. That's definitely doing something back there. I should be monitoring the instruments for sure. Not as simple as that. Oh, it's a very quiet engine. <laughs> I might need to turn the volumes up slightly, but let me know in the chat if you can't hear me clearly. We have started engine number two. Uh, Tim Fraser, thank you very much. One of my uh, continuous donations from you, Tim, and a long-term member. Uh, went past Oxford Aviation Day, saw a lovely Seneca coming into land. Early start tomorrow, so you may have to finish up the stream. Uh, look at X. Thank you very much, Tim, for the donation. Yes, Oxford is where I did my instrument rating, so uh, I think they've all got posh Seneca 5s now. Not the Seneca 2 that I used to fly on, but uh, awesome to hear, and I hope you can catch up the stream as soon as possible. Uh, have a great evening, Tim. Thank you. Look at that. 
Uh, MSJ, is this going to be VFR right or IFR? We're flying IFR. Oh, no, I know what I forgot to do. Let's do that again. Oh, no. Please don't. I hope we don't have any issues. I forgot to put fuel in. Oh, <laughs> abrupt change of sound. Thank you very much. Captain Elks, well done. Yes, got the fuel. There we are. I think we've got two good engine starts. Check engine RPM increases to more than 2,000. Uh, so here is prop RPM. Yes, 2,000 RPM, 3,000. Got torque. We've got whatever that is. No torques up here. Fuel flow. Oil temperatures. Well, they should be slowly rising, which they are. Oil oh, pressure. All right. Excuse my lack of knowledge on turbo props. Uh, generator switches could come on now. Where are they? Uh, generators on. So you have to kind of drag these switches. Um, oh no, there we go. Generators on. Cabin temperature control auto. Right. You have to you have to use the mouse for this. Cabin temperature mode hold. Cabin temperature set. Well, let's just put that to warm because it is cold outside. Uh, elevator trip for takeoff. Less than minus 0.2. Right, okay. Well, I'll imagine that's set. Flaps for takeoff. What is the flap setting for this aircraft? I mean, we could easily take off with no flaps, no problem. Uh, but let's go for flap 10. Oh, ah, you have to hold this down. Okay, that's, that's different. Right, that'll do. Uh, Edge instruments checked. Bleed air switches on. Well, they'll be for the boots or some description then. I think they're electrically heated. I have no idea what bleed air is used for on this. Um, where is the bleed air? I'm probably staring right at it. There it is, bleed air. That's on. DI says required, not required. Taxi clearance obtained, seat belts on. Alright. Uh, no, sm uh, you can smoke on these flights. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Barrow is set. So I didn't set it on the um, first officer's side. So we've got two nine uh, four seven. Two nine. Fifty. Uh, Why is that 40, changing really slowly? Uh, just before I set that. Thank you very much to uh, Pastor Escobar, who's donated seven pounds seventy-three. Where is the food? He asked. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Escobar. I've seen you for a while. Uh, thank you for your donation. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any sort of sounds like that to kind of simulate. Uh, we have sort in the back there, but thank you very much for the donation, nonetheless. Right? Can you see this, guys? The pressure's all different on this. So we've got two hundred and seventeen feet here. And then, look at the... This is broken, I think. I don't want to use this altimeter, look, because I, I can't set the correct Q&H. Like, the scale's completely broken. Alright, we're not going to use the first officer's instruments, okay? Because, look, that's saying 301 or 300 something. And that's 29 er Well, this one's correct. That's a bit weird. I don't know if that's a glitch or something's working, but uh, I don't know. Well, imagine it's set. Flaps set for takeoff. Navigation source selected. Transponder motor selected. Set. Well, let's put that to... Uh, oh, we need to turn it on first. Uh, let's put that to ground, I guess. Let's put it on. 2020, perfect. Uh, taxi lights on. Ex it literally, this is the first time I've flown this aircraft, guys. Literally the first time I've flown it. All I've done is spot it up to 10,000 feet to take the screenshot. And I thought I'd leave it, uh, leave it for the stream. Right, that's it. Before takeoff checklist. Right, let's just get keep the engines running. Um, let's just keep the rest there. Placard in up if you please. Uh, yes. Anthony Till, you need to tap that glass. Is that actually true or is that what we... <laughs> I didn't know if that was some sort of weird thing that the developer might have set up because I know there's all these sort of perks here. Oh look, minor issue that we have the uh, cargo door still open. How do I close all this stuff? Alright, uh, toggle weight balance. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, here it is. Close, close. I think we're all good. Let's get rid of that. Right, let's have a little chat about um, what we're going to fly and what we're going to do. So we're here in um, Aberdeen. We're going to taxi out Mike, depart for runway 34, and then we're going to climb straight out. There is a sort of SID here, um, which we're going to follow. It's um, essentially climb straight ahead towards the Aberdeen VOR. 
uh, for runway 34, and we're doing via Perth. Climb to 1200 feet and then make a left turn, intercept the Aberdeen Radial 220 to Perth, and it's a straight line between the VORs, so that's nice and easy. Uh, thank you very much to Zerkwitz, who's just joined as a member. I'm glad you're enjoying the content, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy all the exclusive members only content, which you'll uh, so get received through Discord. Thank you very much for your membership there. Guys, don't forget to punch the thumbs up like button as well if you're enjoying this content as you watch me scratch my head and try and work out what the hell I'm doing in this, this uh, turboprop aircraft. We are 18 minutes in, engine's running, but uh, let's carry on with the SID briefing. As I said, 1200 feet, left turn 220. So let's, uh, let's dial in here the HSI 220. Um, and we want 14.3 as the active VOR. Flag. Oh, that's quite useful. Let's do that. 14. So, how do. I... Oh, this is not easy to set. 14 3. Uh, thank you very much as well, whoever that was that's just joined as a member. Uh, Stephen Jenkinson, welcome to the channel as a member. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, welcome on board. Uh, hopefully. Uh, one of the members will help you out getting into Discord. What is going on here? I cannot. I cannot set the nav aid. 14.3. Right, let's put that active, see what happens. Right, excellent. Stuff's coming alive. We've got the uh, needles pointing towards the RMI, the HSI is alive. Right, let's do that initially. So that's what we're going to do. Climb straight at 1200, 220 radial from Aberdeen. We're going to climb up to flight level 100 today for the cruise. Um, and then we'll monitor our progress. I'm just going to leave direct to Glasgow there. Um, and again, we'll have a vote on the way, you guys. If you want me to fly a visual approach, or you want me to fly a procedural ILS, let me know. We'll have a, uh, have a bit of fun on the way there. You guys, uh, you decide what has to be done. Uh, cool. So, we are going to fly around 220, flight level 100, direct to Perth. We'll, we'll tune Perth on the way. Uh, I think that's it, guys. Let's now taxi to the holding point. So, uh, RPM, I guess I leave it full. Let's release the parking brake. Oh, why is my... There we go. I was wondering why my redders were working for a second. Oh, it's pretty tight, so I probably should have gone the other way. Don't worry if I hit the ladder. Nothing to see. Y yeah, okay. No problem. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Right, we'll, um, we'll get to the before takeoff checklist when we get to the whole point. Antique Teal says brace. Absolutely. And look at this weather. It's. I was really concerned when I decided to fly this aircraft that the weather would be bad, but um, no, we've been quite lucky here. Let's stick uh, flight level 100 up here. Uh, Zuckwitz, wait, there's a Discord. Yes, but it's for members only. Um, if you type in YouTube Discord membership, um, and synchronization on Google that will talk you through the steps how to get into my discord it is purely for members only um, and uh, you know if you cancel your membership the subscription automatically you get a 24 hour grace period and then, and then you kind of boot it out but it's just a, you know if I had a public discord I'd have every Tom Dick and Harry joining in and, and causing problems no doubt but uh, yeah that's it you know, hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. 30, 40, 30. Thank you very much again for another donation, uh, Gary Hughes. You've definitely donated for, before, I, I'm sure. Uh, for some treats for Jack, I know it's difficult financially during your stand-down period for real fly. Thought us go out for Fly Beast after they. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gary Hughes. Yes, of course, I'm missing my uh, sector pick, which I've not received for three months, but uh, that's very kind of you to top that up, but uh, I will spend that on Jack, uh, as requested by yourself. Thank you very much. Well, excuse my very leisurely taxiing pace, but um, we are just making our way towards the whole point for three, four... It's a lovely little add-on, though. It's a sh great shame we don't have the, the Fly B livery, though. But yes, definitely think about all the, the Fly B stuff. That's some that taxi right at the line. More solid external view. I'll take that. Right, well, usually we'd be running some sort of before takeoff checklist uh, at my operator, but obviously the aircraft's nothing to do with that, uh, but the briefing we know for the SID, we're going to climb straight ahead, 1200 left turn, 220 radial outbound, climb to flight level 100 ATC offline, obviously as we don't 
go on Van Sim at the moment for the reasons everyone well knows. <laughs> um, that's really it. Well, imagine the cabin is secure, the passengers sat down, they're all happy, and uh, we'll uh, line up a wait runway 3 4. So let's pop some lights on. Uh, what we got going on up here? Oh, I don't even know where the lights are. Oh, I feel like I should turn. Oh, look at that. I hope I'm not on the grass, by the way. No, we am good. Well, let's turn all these lights up. I'm looking more for the external lights, but. No landing lights? Where are the landing lights? Flight computer. Alright, um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll just leave the taxi lights on. <laughs> and then we'll uh, line up on runway 3 4. Now, again, I've not read any pilot's operating handbook of this aircraft, so I don't know what the takeoff power is. Is it just full power, like on a light aircraft, or do you set a certain amount of torque? I guess we have to bring the RPM back at some point. Um, because uh, it, it, you know, uh, you know, it's, what, why else would you have pitch control? Like the mixture, well, it's a jet engine, so there'll be there'll be some sort of computer managing all that, I'm sure. Right, anyway, there's runway three four. I keep forgetting I've disabled the tiller control on my joystick. That's why I'm overshot that because I tried to turn with my tiller, but it's only the rudder pedals which are turning the aircraft today. Right, so we're putting in the right direction. Uh, there's my wing view for the passengers and we have a, an engine view here for the first officer so let's get this uh, checklist up open checklist chrono start at holding point takeoff clearance obtained winds calm and uh, let's start the chronometer uh, not that button is it start stop 8.55 that's the time oh well I'd, I would love to set the chronometer but it's not working Date. That's today mode. Oh dear. Well, oh look, there we go. Taxi lights off, landing lights on. Oh my god, right, let's just do this. <laughs> Taxi lights off. I thought, I thought they were on. It says off. Where on earth are these landing lights? They're not up here, are they? Taxi light off. Where are the landing lights? <laughs> <laughs> Can you someone in chat tell me where they are? Landing lights are just above windshield on the right hand side. Just above the the windshield. Windshield. I, I, I'm staring right at it. I know I am. I know I am. <laughs> Next to the ignition switches. Cliff take off no delay, please. Ah landing lights on. Oh, is that on or off? Off. Uh, Alpaca zero two, go around. <laughs> Please acknowledge runway blocked. <laughs> All right, we're, we're good. We got the landing lights on. Parking brake off. Uh, there we go. Four hundred feet prop reduced to seven thousand RPM. Anti ice is required. Climb flaps up. Set standard. All right, I think we're good. So seven thousand RPM. We we'll need to reduce it to. Right, I'll go full power. Uh, rotation speed, no idea. We've got stall speed. Oh. God, I should remember this, the little blue line. Is that the best single engine climb speed? I'm not sure, I can't remember. Right, parking brake release, let's go. Doesn't take long to spool up. Take off for a set indication, it's normal. We're not going to get to 80 knots, but we'll already be airborne. Is that rolling to the right? An aileron into it, here. Right, let's rotate there. And we're airborne. Uh, trimming. Right. What's the best climb speed? I have no idea. Up we go. <laughs> Let's go for 100 knots. Ooh, bit of, bit sensitive here. Oh, I feel like I should be reducing this RPM here. I'm just going to reduce. Let's go flaps up. Let's go for 100 knots. There's 100 knots. I'm going to pitch up now and trim. Just take a little bit of power off. Let's reduce this RPM to 7,000. There we are, 7,000 RPM. We're now going to wait for 1,200 feet. Ooh, crikey, look at this go. He's trimmed down a bit more. Alright, there's 1,200. Let's make that left turn. How long will this flight be? Uh, about 45 minutes, I think. I 
have no idea how realistic these sounds are. I've never been... Oh, I have been in a, uh, a Twin Otter before. Uh, I went to the Maldives years ago with my, my girlfriend about five, six years ago and went on one of those. So I have been on here. I can't remember if it sounded like this. All I remember is it being really loud. So I think if we just keep on this heading, we should be able to intercept that radio. Uh, I'm climbing around 110 knots. Where's the DME distance for this? How do I set DME on the uh, instruments here? I'll have to have a play with that later. I think there is an autopilot, but I think it's pretty rudimentary. Uh, after takeoff checklist, then, or some description. Props set to less than 7,000 RPM. Yes, anti-ice is required. Yes, flaps are attracted. Check transition altitude. Yeah, we can set standard. Well, I'm only going to do that on this altimeter. Two nine and nine. Uh, two. Check transition altitude. Yes, Sparrow is set to standard. Yes. Landing lights as required. We'll turn them off. God, this this thing climbs like a bat out of hell. Really impressive. So yeah, for those of you wondering where I'm going, I'm just keeping on this heading until I intercept this radial. I don't think there was anything on the chart which mentions... Let's get rid of this. Uh, no heading really, just said turn at 1200 feet. So we'll just keep on this heading to intercept this radial and then we'll fly outbound. Uh, it has an autopilot, doesn't it? Uh, it has a pitch hole mode as well. I, I'm just going to climb up manually. It's all nicely trimmed out when it's nice and smooth here. Power I haven't really. I've reduced slightly from full power. Landing lights as required. We'll leave those on. Seat belt signs required. Throttle for cruise condition set. No idea what the cruise power setting is. I do know the cruise speed is 150 knots. Cabin temperature checked. And the next is descent. Alright, we'll leave that page open. Well, this VOR radio better be coming on at some point. So we're late for 220. You can see the tail of this. I think the RMI is. Let's get rid of that. I need to tune both boxes. Oh, VOR, VOR. So you can see how the tail of that is being dragged around. You can see here comes the radio. There she goes. 220 coming up. So we'll make a left turn. I don't know what the winds are up here. So we'll set a heading around 220 to fly outbound. And then we'll tune up Perth. Hundred and fifty knots, pilot boy. That's a slow bird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not used to that. We're climbing around one hundred and twenty at the moment, and then we'll we'll just level off, and then um, let the aircraft accelerate to one hundred and fifty, and just set power to maintain that speed roughly. Lovely and calm, though. Look at these. Look at this weather. Direct to Glasgow as well. 50 minutes so that we can see. That will probably be about 45 by the time we level off. Uh, so I've reached just direct to Glasgow in here. Uh, there you go, look, see we're pretty much in a straight line. Stuart Payne, looking awesome, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> just a little fly plus actually. Superb. The quietest twin otter you'll ever hear. So RPMs where it should be. These are in the green bit, not the red. T5 temperatures got all these different temperatures here. No, literally no idea. Though. This will be some turbine temperature. GG RPM, prop RPM. I've never flown a turboprop in my life. Oh, what's that? That's just illuminated in front of me. Oh, I think it's just warning me that I'm approaching my cleared flight level, which is flight level 100. So just make a little bit of a right turn, get back onto that radial, but then I can use the autopilot in nav mode. It should track the radial quite nicely. Look at these flying conditions, though. Live weather, absolutely lovely. Uh, 
Uh, Pilot Boy, how about trying to your hand on a Tail Dragon? We have streamed in the DC-3, and I was ooming and ahhing about using the DC-3 today, but um, I really wanted to try the, the Twin Otter. All right, there's flight level 100. Let's pitch down. And trim, trim, trim. Do I keep it at 7,000 RPM? No idea. If there's any Twin Otter pilots here, <laughs> please let me know what the cruise RPM is. I think I'll just leave it at 7,000 RPM. I'll leave the power set just to get up to 150 knots. That's really brought the ETA down. Right, here comes back the power. A bit off track here. I think the wind, there could be some wind here from the west. Let's uh, cheat a little bit out. So let's go. Let's level off. Pilot on. Nav. Altitude. I think that's good. Right. I think now that should be now flying nav mode. It should be flying this radial for me. We've got GPS. So it's 36 minutes. It's not going to take long now. Cool. <laughs> Paulius radial is getting away. <laughs> Very critical of you. Was though you're quite right. Right. Anyway, so you can see on the SID we are going to be flying towards Perth, one one zero decimal four. You can see, yes, we do need to fly a little bit closer to the right to get back onto that radio, and then we'll tune up Perth, which is uh, ten four ten four. Isn't that some trucker terminology? Nav two. So how do I get DME on this? Surely this should be able to be DME or some description. Ten four active. There we go. So we got one VOR nav two. And we start the OBS as well. I hate used to them to navigate with this. So flying outbound on nav one. Uh, from Aberdeen, and then on Nav 2, we're routing direct to Perth. It's both on the same radio, which is the 220 two, uh, two, two radio. Um, I have got a flight plan actually generated from Simbrief here. Uh, here we are. Look at that 448 kilos minimum fuel. <laughs> Wouldn't even want to be in a 737 with that a small amount. And then obviously the A380 guys take a lot more. <laughs> so, geographically, you can see our uh, routing here. There we are. Straight line. There's uh, Glasgow. Edinburgh is our alternate. And then we're going to be flying up to uh, Barrow, which is around here. Which is one of these islands shortly. So it's about equal flight time, about 45 minutes each. But uh, regarding geographically exactly where we are. Stonehaven, this area of Scotland, very unfamiliar with, but it looks lovely. Yeah, lovely, lovely um, modelling. Uh, ooh, uh, a slight issue with one of my ortho tiles, it would seem. <laughs> looks like the Sahara Desert, or <laughs> some sort of desert issue. I guess I need to uh, redo that tile at some point. <laughs> I've never, never seen that before. Perfect. Uh, Volprick, how do you know when to descend when you intercept a specific DME or localizer? Well, I mean, three times you height not work in an aircraft like this, but you could work out, uh, you know, how many minutes, the easiest way is to work out how many minutes you want to be at a certain height. Uh, use the estimated time of route, so if you want to be at an X height, then just descend at a set rate of descent, so 1,000 feet per minute. If you want to be at 5,000 feet, it'll take five minutes. Five minutes there. Speed distance time calculations are well in the back of my head these days, but uh, that's the easiest way to do. Uh, ben Strava, set your CDI to GPS. I, I that's That would be even more boring, but I'm going to route conventionally where I can. In fact, what I'm actually going to do now briefly is go heading select. Uh, so I deselect nav, go heading. I hope that's on heading select. There's no real way of telling this. Um, and why is my flight director here below the horizon or is that where it's meant to be right at the point here oh, I don't like that um, yeah because I want to put um, 
Perth is the active one now, which is... 1104. There we go. Let's go back to Nav. Oh no, we'll just make sure we're on the... We'll just imagine we can clear direct to Perth. There we go. Let's go Nav. Yeah, I should now make a turn to stay on that radio, I hope. Um, and I think you can choose on this one which navigation... Nav 1, Nav 2, which, which um, VOR do you want the autopilot to follow. I think that's what that does. There we go. Oh, it's finally bitten onto that radio. Look, around it goes. And now I can actually put the Glasgow VOR active, uh, which is 15.4, on um, box 2. A little bit, yeah, a little bit out of range for Glasgow VOR. But yeah, half an hour to go, 84 miles. We should pick it up soon enough. Uh, Steve Mayer, good evening boss, sorry I didn't join earlier, but just finished Manchester to Dublin. Well, I hope you had a safe flight. We're only uh, only about uh, 15 minutes airborne or so, so you haven't missed too much. We got the aircraft up and running pretty quickly, but uh, all looking good so far. What is this here? Absolutely no clue. I think that's when you're on final approach, baby. It shows you your... you actually no idea. love to know what that is. You can see the GPS is slightly off because we're actually rooting towards the, the Perth VOR. Uh, 10 4. And that is active there. And then 15 4. I guess flag means it's not identified, but I want to get DME on this. Mode. Oh, OBS 2 from. Estimate time. No. Change of frequency. I want to get DME on this. That's just how long we've been going for. Oh, that should be on altimeter as well. There we go. Okay. Uh, pilot by Perth, Australia. Nope, Perth, Scotland. <laughs> I think there's two Perths. It's a good way of actually showing. Ah, oh, V-lock here, 110, ah, okay. Ooh, that's quite cool, we can pop that out. Oh, look, there's the per, that's where we're rooting to. We're going to go towards that VOR first, then to Glasgow. Right, I'll get rid of this. Oh, it's the flap indicator. Oh. So if I, I'm sure it's safe to, I'm just going to extend flaps a tiny bit. Ah, oh, you're correct. Very good. Thank you very much, Alberto Sinigaglia, for telling me what the flap indicator is. Brilliant. Pilot boy, got to go. Safe touchdown. Thank you very much. Herman AX Highbus just turned up. Thank you very much. We are a quarter or a third of the way on our way to Glasgow from Aberdeen, making good progress. I think it's worth a little cabin tour. Uh, remove this cover. That's not, oh look, it's actually got the lighting as well. That's really cool. Oh look, seatbelt fastened, but you can smoke. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they have the three seats in the back here. You can really get the weight balance off on an aircraft like this. That's a cool view. Yeah, not much to see in the cabin. <laughs> Ah, Amy Parent, part purpose of VR early, no DME. Got you, got you. That would explain why I have no DME information. And it looks like we've got the Glasgow VOR active as well. Do we get all our nice IDEN sounds? Yes, we do. I can hear it pinging in the background just about. Cool. Um, right, so what I'm going to do, guys, is get the. Um, 
charts out for Glasgow. No idea what runway in use uh, is at the moment. I should think they're probably landing on 2-3 here, which I think is the preferred runway with light variable winds. It's been a very long time since I've flown into Glasgow, but I have been in there in real life. Um, arrival, I think we are flying a bit of arrival. It's Perth 1 Golf, so we're going via Perth. Although we have no DMB. And then we're going to go towards Grice. And then from Grice to Styra. And we'll fly some sort of procedural approach uh, inbound. Although I'd request a, a visual today because it's lovely. Um, approach then. So we've got VRLS DME runway 05. So that would be a procedural outbound for runway 05, but I should think they're on runway 23. Uh, there's a VORLS DME for runway 23. I mean, you come in this direction, oh, it's a bit of a... Oh, the procedural approach is a bit elongated, if I'm honest, because we're going to go from here, straight outbound, all the way around here in the hold, and then inbound. I think that's a little bit overkill, <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest, for today. Um, I think we'll probably just self-position for a... Because it's a straight-in approach, basically, for runway 23. Uh, there's an NDV approach for runway 23, but again, that procedural approach will be flying some sort of... Yeah, you go straight to the hold, look, outbound. Outbound of 3,000 feet for 12 miles. In this aircraft, what does that take? 12 miles? It'll take you about 38 minutes. <laughs> That was a joke. Uh, and then we're going to make a, a turn there. I think we'll go. We'll just go straight in on the ILS. Not sure. Uh, what other approaches have we got? All right, I'll leave it up to you guys. What we'll do is to, one of two things. We can either go straight in on the ILS, or we can land on the other runway zero five. Um, which will be a procedural approach because there's no point going into the hold outbound and round again. And then again, this way is a long way as well. Look, can I be here? 10 miles? It's up to you. If you'd like me to go straight in, let me know in the chat. If you want me to fly the procedural approach, which will be outbound, we could go for runway 05, or we could still do 23, but again, that's really that's like overkill going all the way around here outbound. It, it just wouldn't happen. Drew 1231, you'd like to see a procedure, okay? One mile final. <laughs> procedural approach. Straight in procedural just seems boring. <laughs> Jamin, it looks like the approach for 2 3 is a little loop to shorten it. Oh, yes, but I think that's the hold. That's the hold. You can't really do that loop on the actual approach. You'd have to go all the way outbound to 12 DME off the ILS. Yeah, look, you can see 12.1. That's just the, the hold, the publish hold there. Straight in, boss. Straight in on 2-3. Straight in. I think straight in looks like the preferred. Otherwise, this was a pretty straightforward approach. So I think we'll go straight in on the ILS. Uh, 1,000 feet per minute. I think that would be the easiest thing to do. Dive in. We should do wing down. Full rudder. <laughs> uh, Tom Kippy, how is it? how easy is it to butter a twin otter? Uh, listen, my butter streak recently has been incredible. I'm not gonna lie, it's been very, very good. <laughs> I don't know how. We what was our last stream? Yes, of course, it was um, Santos Dumont, the shortest possible runway you can land a 737. And we did like a minus 70. <laughs> I don't know how I pulled it off. Oh dear. Uh, Steve Jenkinson, YouTube and Discord sync every hour. So yeah, I can manually do it, which I always do after the stream, uh, but it is around every hour or so. It takes around an hour or so to do it manually. Cool, so we're flying inbound to Perth. Thank you. Oh, GPS is brilliant. So I think what we should probably do now is just redirect to Glasgow. And then, I mean, if we go direct to Glasgow on the 230 radio, guess what? We'll just inter eventually intercept the ILS. So we'll fly that approach. NDB, VRLS, DMU, NDB, ILS. So let's just go direct to 15.4 now. coming into Grice. Yeah, well, imagine it. He just said, all right, we're direct to Glasgow. That would be the easiest way of doing it. 
Let's go to 15 for it's gonna heading first. No wind up here at all. Look, our heading's exactly matching the uh, RMI there. Right, heading select. Okay. Let's go 15 4 on box 1. I'm just going to go. What's the final course? 229. Let's just stick 229 in there and then we'll go straight in, won't we? Zero two two nine. So we need to go left a little bit here. That is very sensitive. Dave, I'll try flying into Lukla Airport in Nepal with the plane as there's a challenge and a blast. Yes, that will definitely come soon. Uh, I was actually considering doing that today, but um, I needed to uh, get a bit more information about the scenery that's available because I know there is a payware scenery which covers a lot of the area, but I'd rather get the ortho, uh, if I'm honest. If there's actually decent ortho for that area. Uh, so 15.4, uh, ILS will be one zero decimal one, which we'll put on the uh, standby. Ah, oh, god damn it! Cool. Um. Yeah, was, did someone say there is a... Oh, is it, there's NDB here as well, we can select that too. Uh, did someone say there is a way of doing DME? I missed that in the chat. Uh, Tough Bob, I don't remember flying a 10 mile loop when I landed a Cessna 172. Did you have a, some other procedural approach you could fly? I mean, maybe you can do the hold or shortened or you got vectored onto a shortened approach, but the full procedural approach goes out to 12 miles. I'm just reading the chart here. If unable to receive DME off the ILS, radar ranges can be provided till four mile four mile holds. So you can get a radar request then. Uh, Jamley, what is our altitude? We're at flight level 100 right now. Look at that warfare! It is uh, awesome. Looks really good up here. Water's looking a bit lifeless though, but I know x does that when you have no wind simulators. Have I definitely got active sky running in the background? Just better just double check that. Yeah, 100% running. Superb. So there's the Perfure. Go back to nav as soon as we're right on top of it. DME button down the radios. Lapse uh, timer. That's just your lapse timer. It's probably showing me right in the face. Call timer. Stand by. No, I can't see any any DME there. Uh, Thomas Nears, would you say the Zebo sounds are accurate to real life? Yes, I'm very impressed with the the Zebo sounds. Some slight differences, but then again, there's uh, for a desktop simulator, you can't complain. Uh, they are some of the best you can get on a desktop sim. Uh, Fort M, when do you know when to drop the gear in the 737 at my operator? VMC, we tried to drop the gear at 4 miles, uh, IMC around 5 miles. Uh, it depends on several factors. If you're coming a little bit faster, uh, or you, you, you're quite bumpy, you might want to get configured a little bit earlier. But there's no hard fast rule, that's the that's what I'm just trying to do. Right, this radial uh, will take us straight in onto the uh, ILS. Very, very aggressive those turns. Actually, route direct to Glasgow again. A little bit of wind then, three degrees of drift. And 
there we are. Oh, we've got a radio altimeter. Right, how do I... I think I can even set minimums on this, can't I? So yeah, we're going to fly straight in, guys, onto the localizer. Minimums are 221 feet. Or 200 rad out. Do you have a radio altimeter? Let's stick that to 200. Fly 3,000, straight ahead 2,500 feet, and then a left turn to hold at the VOR. That's the missed approach. There is an NDB, look, 331, and you want to tune something else. So it's worthwhile getting that up, and then we'll have a needle always pointing at the station. Even though we have a VOR there. Uh, how do I tune this bad boy? 3, 3, nope. 1. Let's put that to ADF. Definitely not pointing at it yet. <laughs> what was that about damaged ground equipment, Tim? We were doing well till we damaged ground equipment to Aberdeen. Yes, we do have one of the uh, ladders from the airport currently stuck to the, le to the uh, left wing. <laughs> Zirkits, what is more accurate to the real thing, the Zebo or the NGXU? Now, I've not flown the PMDG NGXU, their updated version, uh, because I kind of switched to x 11 around two years ago, because for me it's a better core desktop simulator, uh, far better represents how flight is modelled. Um, so I can't really answer that question. Um, if I could compare the Zebo to the original PMDG, it depends what you want to get at your sim, really. I think the PMDG is a at a, a base level, it's got a lot more systems kind of accurately modelled, a lot better failure management system and stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a very well-finished product. Uh, the FMC is really good and stuff. What the Zebo does is the way it flies and the way it feels in x 11, which uh, top trumps for me, the PMDG, which is why I switched um, to x -Plane. Uh, let's see what um, Microsoft Flight in 2020 has to offer, because I know PMDG are making an aircraft there. I will obviously fly that at some point. Uh, but for me, uh, I never used prepared, but I heard it's nowhere near as stable as a simulator, as I explained. So not just taking the 737 into account, what do you want to get? You want to be able to get a simulator which works flawlessly, uh, which x 11 does. It's, it's, it, it runs so nicely. I mean, I've, I've only had one crash during the stream, and that was during a replay. Uh, I've never had any issues. Where are you taking us, automation? Uh, so yeah, for me it's the Zebo mod. Uh, and Sally, your opinion on when the Max will be certified? Um, I don't really divulge publicly my thoughts on the Max. Um, I hope it gets fixed as soon as possible from Boeing. Um, and no doubt it'll be the most, by the time it comes to the line, it'll be the most, um, you know, <laughs> rigorously tested checked aircraft ever, but uh, fingers crossed I'll get that done sooner rather than later, but it needs to be needs to be properly checked out. Ali Hughes, good night to all, time for the wifey's evening cuppa, enjoy the rest of the flight, we'll catch you later, thank you very much Anne for coming in nonetheless, have a, a great evening as well. Uh, Justin Gold at work now, safe landings too, yes, you too have a great evening, we'll be landing in approximately 15 minutes. Uh, Jasus, I just spent way too much money on prepared to move over to X-Plane now, just going to wait for 2020. Yeah, I fully understand that, and uh, a lot of people have a lot invested in these simulators. But that's the thing for uh, for prepared and FSX, you have, to, you have to buy everything here, left, right and centre, to make it work. I mean, even when I started my tutorials on FSX Steam, I think I probably spent 200 quid on airports and uh, add-ons and all that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean... If you have a look at my video description of the plugin section, or or use uh, Nightbot to find it, um, it will show you what I have. And most of my plugins are free. Uh, Xvision I've installed, um, and the rest are I think, all, all free to download. And look at, I mean, just look. <laughs> you can tell it's it's a stunning simulator. And uh, certainly from the 737, that handles manually like the real thing. It's really good. Tim Skip, you spent eight hundred dollars in X-Plane add-ons last year. Tim, I think I've spent more than that <laughs> myself with add-on aircraft, payware airports, and uh, God knows what. You can spend a lot on it. Right. So we should probably start thinking about our. Could be look at pressing zero in the Zebu mod to get to the um, 
the EFB, uh, but I have to do this here. Uh, yeah, we should probably start thinking about our descent into uh, Glasgow now. So we're doing the NDB ILS. Have we started to identify that ADF yet? Yes, look, we have ADF. We're both of these got one needle pointing towards the VOR, one pointing towards the NDB, and you can both see, look, they're on the airfield, look, NDB and VOR are just here. So we've got uh, 13 minutes to run, 34 miles. A bit 9,000 feet in the 737 at the moment. Could we lay the sense slight at this because I should think this can drop very quickly. We do obviously have some high terrain here. Are they both still on view? Or? Sorry, you're quite right. So for some reason, the ADF isn't tuned and identified. Very well spotted, whoever that was. Uh, 331, what did I tune? Oh, I've got a 331 tune, so I don't know why. It needs to be a little bit close, I think, so it's all right. about 25 miles, don't we? Uh, thank you very much again for the donation positive rates. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, again, yes, you donated last live stream and you've been busy making paint schemes for my aircraft, so thank you very much, positive rate. I'll catch up with you later on Discord, no doubt, uh, Gaines. Thank you, indeed. <laughs> Lee Russell, have you put the uh, have the crew put their trolleys away? <laughs> I think they've just stashed out of the seats. Cool. I reckon if we start a gentle descent now, we can't go too far wrong. So, what's the best way of doing this? Let's uh, disconnect out, trim up. What? Is it? Oh, uh, it's disconnected the autopilot now because I've trimmed down. Um, and let's get that little X checklist out. Cruise done that. So target altitude set. Well, let's go down to. Let's just link it to send quite gently. I'm just taking a bit of power off. Uh, what's the platform? Let's go down to 2,900. Well, let's just stick it 3,000. That's it, really. Just reduce the power. So if I'm gone to completely idle, just want to do around a thousand feet per minute, no more. Yeah, no idea why the NDB's not quite tuned. I should think it's because we're a little bit far out still. Yeah, to be fair, 25 miles I think is usually the sort of range at which an NDB becomes accurate. I'm just again flying directly to the VOR. Put that back to VOR. Cool. Well, this thing's easy to fly. <laughs> Actually, do you need... Yeah, you need a tie racing on this, wouldn't you? Of course. I think you do. So, what does this button do? MDA, go around, altitude alert. Ah, if I put altitude alert, does that mean it'll level off at 3,000? That would be quite useful. I'll pl I'll leave that on, so I don't get uh, distracted. Plus, right? Can we have a look outside? Of course you can. Flying manually, but it's perfectly in trim. Looking good. I hope this Barracene is installed properly as well. I was having issues with it earlier. Once I installed it, the rum, it didn't seem to work, so I landed in the sea after I landed on the uh, beach, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Guess the mystery. You love flying this plane. Definitely one of the most detailed. Yes, it does look very, very nice. Jason Dicta, do you ever fly around as a private pilot when you aren't in the 737? Note, my SCP rating expired long ago. 
big part of me does still wish I kept that current, but um, once you're flying 80 plus hours a month in the summer, you do like to honestly see the back of an aircraft, if you're honest. Clement, just a quick question, will you be buying the Falcon 8X by Aerobass that explain when it comes out? I, I'm i always open to flying other aircraft these days in the stream, so this is one that's been requested quite a few times, so I thought we'd jump into it. Today, I'll uh, have a look at that. Daniel Smith, you're going for a shower. Lovely. Enjoy. <laughs> Abbas, good question. What's the Q&H? And we've probably set that as well as we are now descending. Let's get the latest weather from uh, Glasgow, from the Metar. Uh, 998, the same as Aberdeen. So let's, uh, oh, what's that on my little table? Uh, 998. It is... 2947. Let's set the QNH now. 2947. And as we discussed, this one's broken. Yeah, it's not, it's definitely not working, this gauge. So, FO's altimeter is in op. <laughs> Poor Daniel. Plus one for the TBM. Yep, that's another one that uh, will be good to jump in at some, into at some point. What's the MSA in this sector? Actually, that's a good point. Uh, the MSA here is 4,900 feet, so we've got to be a bit careful here. Uh, yeah, look, we're in this sector here. We are VMC visual, so you're alright to go below the MSO. As long as you're flying under visual rules, you can be under IFR rules, but raid, raid, if you're under radar control, they won't take you any lower there than their radar minimums. Uh, thank you very much to Cynic HG, who's just joined as a member. Thank you very much for the support. Glad you're enjoying the content, and I hope you'll enjoy all your exclusive members only content, uh, content which will all uh, be organised through Discord. Thank you very much. There's 5,000, so just going below the MSA, but we'll keep going down to 3,000 feet. In fact, I get my binoculars out. Look at that, we have three reds <laughs> in Glasgow. Very incredible that you can see the pappies at that range. But the instrument navigation is working just fine. Let's arrest our rate of descent slightly. Let's get a bit of power. Excellent. Looks like we do now have the ADF pointing in the right direction. So we can now use the ADF to navigate to the airfield. And we'll select the ILS on box 1 and 2, which is 110-1. Oh, look at that. I think we have glide... Oh, excuse me. I think we have glide slope information as well. Look at that. We're on the glide slope. This is now acting as a localizer. Looking good. Yeah, it's a great shame. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably think about going on VATSIM again soon. But I think from what I've heard, I've been talking to someone in VATSIM quite recently. I'll have a way of dealing with any potential issues. But uh, more for that to follow in due course. So let's keep going down to 3,000 feet. Kind of flying a bit visually as well. What a lovely day. Yeah, it would, it would be nice if we had some proper IMC conditions, of course, but uh, we do live weather here. If I'd done this a week ago, it would have been horrific. if I press approach. Oh, we're on a, a disconnect anything. Look, it wouldn't take it because we were high on the glide slope. I'm going to do a full ILS. 
so I can actually look at the chat and <laughs> answer some questions. So I'm going to take a bit of power off here just to get onto the uh, glide slope. Yeah, I can't work out how to get DME up on there. Uh, in case you didn't know, FT Sim have a very nice sound pack for this plane in their website. Ah, cool. That would have been good to know, but I, um, I know a lot of aircraft have some excellent sound packs. Uh, Campion, I'm flying right over your house. Cool. I'm not flying very accurate. I'm keep looking at the chat. <laughs> right, we're approaching a 10 mile final. 50, 40, huh. 30, thank you very much uh, for the donation 10. as well. Jan, uh, or Jan, thank you very much for the £5.81. Very kind. No questions asked, but I uh, appreciate that nonetheless. Very, very kind. Thank you. And here is Glasgow in its uh, full glory. <laughs> Prime Cricket, don't dump the lab. I don't think there's a lavatory on this aircraft. Right, let's try that approach mode again. On approach. Glide slope arm still. Engage. Oh, no. Oh, my God, this flipping aircraft. Don't like the autopilot on this. I should probably fly it manually, I suppose, anyway. Right, now I'm bang on the glide slope. Glide slope nav, so if I engage it... There we go. I think it should now fly the ILS. Famous last words. Yeah, looks good. Right, let's bring the speed back to around 100 knots. I should probably increase the RPM on the engines now. Ooh, where's my little checklist? So, check altitude, landing lights on, yes, seatbelt and no smoking signs are on, uh, yeah, we, we allow smoking in all phases, power out is set, landing clearance obtained, flaps select for landing, which we'll do, power levels idle, thrust reverses deploy, okay, well we definitely need to increase the RPM, so let's do that now. Let's go full RPM. That'll help slow the aircraft down, and I'm going to maintain around... Ooh, it's going really slow now. Cool, I'm having to add a lot of power. Still at 90 knots at this stage. No idea what the initial approach speed is. Clueless. Cool. <laughs> Drew, one, two, three, one, make sure you drop the gear. Thankfully, don't have to remember that one today. So we'll wait a little bit longer for the flaps. What's the final approach speed here? Uh, stall speed I think is around 60 knots with all the stuff out. I reckon if we do around 75 knots, <laughs> the rough guess. We'll see. Cool. All right, guys, get your landing uh, guesses in. Whatever you think I can manage today. My speed going off the window here. Um, and yeah, don't forget, we've got 600 people watching. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up for more butter insanity. <laughs> I don't think we've got 600 likes for sure. Thank you very much. Stall speed is 65 knots in a twin otter. I better not go that slow then. Right, well, it looks to me I'm off the centre line here. Oh, God, the speed is all over the place. What? It's like the automation's kind of chasing the glide slope a little bit. Get some flaps out soon. I uh, didn't even talk about taxi on the stand. Runway 23 then. We'll take the left at uh, Charlie and then taxi. There's a little uh, general aviation uh, point called Gamma. We'll go to Gamma Maintenance Hangers. Jason Dick's approach speed is 1.3 times the stall speed. Yes, very good for a category commercial airliner, but uh, no idea what the stall speed is, which doesn't help. Right, I think I'm going dis to disconnect everything. And uh, let's get some flaps out. Now I know my little flap gauges here. Let's go for flap 20 initially. I'm still really far out. Well, let's do about 75 knots. But if anyone is a, a twin otter pilot, do excuse me for my lack of knowledge flying this uh, great aircraft. I have no idea what the approach speed is, what flaps we use. <laughs> 
should be good. Right, it keeps wanting to roll to the right. I don't know if that's something my side. Thank you very much for the donation. I'm going to take a quick look at that. Uh, oh. Uh, Russell Campbell, thank you very much. Five pounds. Bought the TODIS uh, A321. My good, what a steep learn. My goodness, what a steep learning curve. Awesome aircraft, though. Well, thank you very much for the donation. I'm glad you're enjoying the TODIS. Uh, oh yeah, everyone's been streaming in the TODIS. Uh, it's a new one, isn't it? Uh, the 321's a stretch one. But uh, maybe I should have a look at that. You guys do know I like to fly the Airbus occasionally. Ooh, I don't want to get my speed much lower. There we are. So let's go full flap now. No idea if we actually need to go full flap. Go on, look how much power I need now. Three rock whites. Let's pitch down. Trim, 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 trim. A lot of trim nose down there. Nose really wanted to come up. I don't think I need to use reverse, do I? <laughs> I'm going to be rolling to the end. Oh, what's the wind as well? No idea. Oh, it's really sluggish. Oh, I'd roll compared to being clean. Oh, I've got three reds. No good. Like, the roll rate feels really slow. It's my joystick. I need... I mean, perhaps I need to get a new one because it's really, like... I'm making really small inputs, but it's quite jerky. I don't think I need full flap here. I've got so much power on. Ooh, hello, balloon. Where are we going? <laughs> It's really, like, jerky, my joystick. Oh, God. All over the place. <laughs> Where's my run-out call-outs? Right, let's cut the power. Ooh. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Minus 400. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. That's the hardest landing we've ever had. Oh, my goodness me. Sorry guys, we've landed, we've arrived. That aircraft was really, really hard to fly on final with full flaps. <laughs> I can't believe that. Absolutely smashed it down. Right, what exit is this? I can't wait to see the chat later. Oh no. That is my first time landing the aircraft. Back to normality. And th let's take the left here. <laughs> I'm sure it could take that. But yeah, I went full flap and I was like, I don't know how much power I had on it. It was like um, I had a parachute dragging the aircraft. That's what it felt like. Um, and I was trying to be smooth with the controls, but the joystick was really jerky. What other excuses could I use? Um, picking and running out there. But no, it didn't quite, it didn't quite work for you. <laughs> Injury lawyers for you. <laughs> oh no. Uh, now I usually get, at the weekend especially, I'll have a few comments in from someone saying, you're definitely not a real world pilot. Look at that, landing like this. Oh dear, oh dear. Where am I going to park? Oh, right, I should go around here, I think. I should think we'll go to Gamma Aviation. They might have some uh, new tyres for us or something. Let's go over here. Right, let's go here. Right, start the APU. Weather radar off. <laughs> Stuart Walsh, definitely not a twin autopilot. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, that's a nice little insignia there. Right, let's uh, let's park it here. Oh no, no, I don't really want to watch the replay if I'm perfectly honest. Should we just go straight to uh, straight to the island of Barra? <laughs> Parking brake set. Right, let's have a look at these checklists. Oh dear, oh dear. Open checklist. Uh, so we did that, did that. Flaps up. Chrono stop. 52 minutes. Fine. Let's reset that. Oh, I think I just go. We'll reset that prior to takeoff again. Uh, transponder to standby. Uh, taxi light can come off. We never turned it on. Landing lights can come off. Taxi lights already off. Bleed air switches can come off, which was up here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where is it off? Uh, parking brake set. Pito taxi seatbelt smoking off. That's fine. Radio one and two can come off. Yeah, otherwise we'll drain the battery on the turnaround. So let's turn that off. 
off, off, off. Propeller lever feather. Levers off. Aft boost pumps off. Oh, it goes really quiet, doesn't it? There we are. Uh, anti collision light can come off. Generator switches off. Oh, there we go. Cabin temperature's off. Imagine that's done. I'll leave the battery on because we're going to do the return sector to so the replay. So that's it. Shut down. Uh, checklist is complete, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, welcome to Glasgow, where we actually crash landed. <laughs> I can't believe how difficult that was to fly on final. I, I, as I said, I put all the flaps out and it felt like there was a parachute or something deployed there. It was incredibly draggy, but in pitch it was very wallowy. As soon as I went to rotate, I was like, it's not going to do 30, anything. Uh, 40, I don't even know what, 30, want to know what this says. 20, uh, Volprick. <laughs> <laughs> 17 Corona. He says, Ryan says 10 out of 10 butter. Don't sweat it, Cap. Yes, of course. As the reputation of that airline suggests, that would have been a very smooth landing. Thank you very much for the donation there. Right, let's just have a look at some of the uh, banter here. Um, so, of course, some of the uh, landing rates coming in were obviously, you were all very, very optimistic based on my last 10 streams or so. Minus 80s, minus 60s, minus 100s, and then I absolutely smash it down and hear the comments. Net store, brace, 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 he said. Uh, dang, we had from Mikaya Banjan Fly, dude. Thump, oof, no butter emojis, rip, rip landing gear, broken neck, uh, rip my back, crunch, butter streak, rip, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> laughing my ass off. Uh, anyone know a chiropractor? Uh, where's my lawyer? <laughs> uh, awkward conversation coming up with the mechanic. Uh, injury lawyers for you. That was brilliant. Etc. 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 Brilliant, guys. Thank you very much. Right, let's do the replay. I'll take a quick 5-10 minute break and then we'll do the flight to Barra. That should take about 45 minutes or so. But thank you again for the continued banter as usual. Oh dear. Right, let's get ourselves just above the threat to see what on earth went wrong. Uh, so it was going quite well until about this point. Um, but look, you can see, look at the um, corrections I'm making. It looks like I'm sort of fighting it, but it, it was really sluggish. The the handling, the, the pitch power didn't seem quite right for me. Again, I was trying to fly like a 7-3 as well. Um, <laughs> it looks like I'm really fighting strong winds when there's actually no winds at all there. Let's see what it actually looked like from the threshold. Look at, look at the yaw as well. I wasn't using any rudder, but it was like yawing left and right. And the way, oh, look, I was like, oh dear. <laughs> Just thumped down. Look, no, no, uh, no rotational flare. Uh, no flare there at all. Oh dear. Let's have a look. From, might have been where the aircraft was. <laughs> it's strong. <laughs> Might be a little bit bent, but uh, it's completely fine. Nothing to see. <laughs> that would have been a good landing for an aircraft carrier, that's for sure. Right, good stuff, guys. I'll stick you here in the uh, internal view so you can watch that uh, absolute smash for one more uh, one more time. And then I'll let it taxi on the stand and we'll carry on the stream uh, from there. We'll go to Barra. Uh, so, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget to thumbs up for the uh, hard landing. And uh, I'll see you all in approximately five minutes. Thanks a lot, guys.
Well, thank you very much all for your patience. We are now back up and running again. Um, yeah, the chiropractors booked. Uh, passengers have got their complaints in. I told them to write all their uh, complaints to uh, Alpaca Airlines, uh, PO Box, um, <laughs> London, don't really care, dot com, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely smashed it down. No idea. Um, th I went full flaps, which I probably shouldn't have done unless the runway was incredibly short. It was so draggy. And when I cut the power, it just lost all speed, I think. Interesting. I want to replay that later and see what happened to the airspeed um, when we cut it. It absolutely um, yeah, plonked down. I had no lift left. Um, thankfully, the next airport, the runway is made out of sand, so it doesn't matter. It'll just uh, absorb my hard landing and we'll be completely fine. Oh, Dave R., you've been busy. Um, VFE 20 to 37, 93 knots. Oh, crikey. Flap 10, best angle, climb 87, best climb rate 100. Okay. Uh, VMCA. If you've got 20, 30, 70, 90, was I going way too slow then? I'm trying to just work out what my final approach speed should have been. I have no idea. I think I was trying to bring it in way too slow. Way too slow. Uh, police are looking for the owners of Alpaca Airways. as me commission fly, dude. Fantastic. Right, anyway, let's get everything set up for the um, second sector to Barra. Um, we don't need any of these approach charts. We'll get the airport chart. It's going to be a short taxi for us anyway. Uh... That's not what we want. So we're, we're parked outside the maintenance haggers. Tires have been checked. Everything's all good. Gamma aprons here. We're going to taxi out via Tago Alpha for runway 23 departure. We're sort of going to fly Clyde 3 Alpha Sid, uh, which is here. Um, <laughs> zero passengers to Barra. Uh, yeah, they've all gotten off if they're doing the next flight for two flights. But yeah, um, straight ahead to Zeton. Uh, Clyde straight ahead to. Glasgow 226 to 4.7 DME off go, which is 15.4. Then we're going to make a right turn inbound to Clyde, and then we're going to intercept the radial uh, all the way outbound from Glasgow inbound to... Where's my on chart? To uh, Tiri. We're going to go to a VR called Tiri, which I have no idea what the island is. Um, it's one of the Outer Hebrides. Hebride, uh, out to Hebrides Islands, and then we're going to make a, a turn northwest towards Barra. Um, it's a straight line on an airway called Lima 602, um, and then hopefully we'll get the NDB at Barra, or at least got GPS, and then yeah, we'll uh, we'll fly right over the top of the airport, I think, and then we'll do sort of like a visual circuit, and then work out what the wind is and work in there. But I think we always want to land away from the sea there, so obviously if anything goes wrong, we won't go for a swim. Um, so. That's that. Let's get these checklists up again all sorted. So introduction. Uh, oh yeah, fuel-wise. How's that looking? So, um, yeah, the passengers are still leave the same. They're obviously absolutely petrified, but you can see we've used a, few, we need a bit more fuel from the forward tank. I don't know how it works, which engine takes fuel from which one, but um, yeah, we used hardly any, but we won't take any extra. We've got more than enough for the, the second sector. Um... So get rid of all of this, and how do I get rid of that? That's it. So that's all checked. Fuel selector to normal. What was the fuel selector? Was that just the these? No, I have no idea. Fuel selector to normal. Well, I've not even changed any fuel selectors on this flight today. What's all this? Bro, oh, brake temperature. A hundred and hundred and fifty. Oh dear. Well, I didn't touch the brakes. Uh, all right, fair enough. Maybe it was just from taxiing in. Uh, oh, engine off, refuel. Crikey, I have no idea. There's all this stuff down here I've not even seen. Ram air, fuel selector normal. Well, I haven't touched anything to turn it off. Our fuel pumps off. All the usual other checks are done. Thank you very much, first officer. Propeller levers to high RPM. Yeah, as high as it goes. Fire detection test. And that's fine. Fuel quantity we checked. Oh, God. Uh, flight instruments checked. We turn all the radios back on. Uh, on, on, on. Uh, we needed Glasgow tuned, which is 15.4, which is still on standby. Uh, radios 1 and 2 and set, nav is set. Weather's not changed, we'll leave the Q&H, and we're ready for the edge to start, so anti collision light will come on. Uh, push back and start, clearance is given. Fuel levers are off, propeller levers are high RPM. Fuel pumps can come on, which are down here. 
on on uh right if you'll leave it is on start right engine uh which is yeah cool please start <laughs> Did I not put the fuel on? No. I knew I'd forgotten something. <laughs> Flipping engine start here. It's exactly the same. And now I've lost the sounds. Yeah, I was just saying how great x Play 11 is. <laughs> That's the quietest engine you'll ever hear. Please start. Uh, why is that not starting? Why have all the sounds gone? Oh dear. Right, fuel is on. Oh, is this still in normal? Yes. Engine igniters. Let's just try and start the left engine. I hope this works. The landing was so hard. Well, the left engine started. Okay. Fuel on. Let's just try the right engine again. I'm mean, going to struggle to get there with one engine. Please, 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 please. Is that going? Or is that the left engine spawning up? No, that right engine is not starting. Uh oh. Okay, well, left engine's up and running. Um, what do I not have done? Uh, which is preventing that engine from starting. Let's go ahead and check this, checklist. Four starting engines. No. Fuel selector, normal. Now, where was this? Is there something else? <laughs> Rip already. Is there something else which is preventing me from getting fuel from the right engine here? Uh-oh. Aft boost pump's off. We're on now. What is the static pito, static pito source? Boost emergency? Ah, what's, what's this? Let's just try it. Fuel selector is under the engine gauges. Was it this? Oh, both on forward, both on off. That's just the fuel pump. Let's just try that again. <laughs> Single engine takeoff. Cycle the fuel lever for the right engine. Oh. Yes, weird business. <laughs> Fantastic. Easy, no problems. All good. Completely qualified to fly this aeroplane. Phew. No problem at all. <laughs> right, starting engines, we did all that. Fuel levers. Uh, that's fine. Pre takeoff, no, we need to do this actually. Alright. Do, 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 do. Fuel levers were off. Start right engine, we did. Start left engine, we did. Generator switches on. Charge here. Oh, DC loads well off the scale. Uh, cabin temperature set. Flaps take off. No idea. Again, one of those tens they're going to use. Uh, engine switch checked. Bleed air switches on. I say engine switch checked. I'm not exactly sure what I'm checking, so <laughs> I presume it's done. Bleed air is on. GI is required. Taxi gear is obtained, seatbelt set, barrow is set, flaps set for takeoff, navigation source selected. We've got 14.3. Uh, 15.4, sorry, not 14.3, 15.4, 2.26. Uh, which is still set for the departure taxi light. Come on now as well. Pilot 
I can break off and there we are. I think we're all good. Ready to uh, test the hook point. Uh, Daniel Smith, you love the engine start sounds. Yes, although it did, uh, you did get the opportunity to listen to it. Uh, I think it was third time lucky, wasn't it, for the uh, number two engine. But uh, anyway, let's now make our way to uh, Barra. like this comment. Thank you very much to whoever that is <laughs> who's done this. Uh, thank you very much to ATC uh, Pro Tips and Tricks who donated uh, 20 Swedish Kroner. Thank you very much. Twin Otter Twin Beach. Single on Beach. Thank you very much for that. I think you were referring to the fact it took me a while to get the edges started. But thank you very much for the donation. Uh, again for your support as I think you are a member. So uh, thank you very much indeed. Right, let's make our way to uh, Hole Point Runway 23. Uh, Glasgow scenery is uh, 80 Sparks. It is a freeware scenery which is available. Uh, the link for that is in the video description below if you are interested. Put a little bit too much power on. Just wanted to get the ball rolling. It's been a very long time since I've uh, flown from Glasgow. That gear's not bent at all. Cool. Well, here's the uh, whole point coming up, so cabin secure, happy with the departure, going to climb straight ahead to 4.7 DME, even though there's no flipping DME here. Oh yeah, I'm going to route direct to the VOI one later on once we get airborne, we can fly this in conventionally to begin with. Uh, and that's it really. Oh, I don't know why I'm using the full length, we could have easily taken Bravo one. <laughs> oh well. Alright, let's do uh, the last few checks. Chrono would start, taxi light off, landing lights on. No, where the landing lights are. Yeah. Oh, no, tiller's not working for some reason. Oh, that's so annoying. Transponder on. We'll start the chronometer. Where is that transponder? Put it out. They're all good. I just want to put on the GPS actually direct to uh, uh, Barra, which I hope it's coded in the uh, GPS for us. Oh, it's nice not to have to overshoot the line massively. Oh, brakes are good, they're already very hot. There we are, right. Uh, yeah, I just want to load the GPS, it's just going to park your brakes set. Uh, so we're going to Echo Golf Papa Romeo. Don't do this on the whole point of an active uh, international airport either. Well, on the active runway, sorry. <laughs> oh, flipping. Uh, now, what, how do the controls work for this? Right, this is fiddly. Right, so Echo. Golf. Papa. Barra Beach, activate. There we are. So 121 miles to go. Uh, there's go. Release the parking brake and uh, let's get going. Fingers crossed for the uh, buttery of Barra. <laughs> right. I'm hoping that the thrust is set and all the indications are where they should be. Rotation speed, have a clue. I think that'll do nicely. There we are, born. Possible and Clive gear up. <laughs> See you later, Glasgow. Nice little vortices coming off. 
Right, that's 400 feet. I'm going to set 7,000 RPM again. Okay, we don't have this DME off the... Um, I don't know how to set the DME up, so I don't know when to make this right turn on the SID. I'm going to have to half guesstimate this. Or you could just <laughs> monitor the chart, but I want this 4.7 DME, which I have no idea how to have set. It's going to go out for 100 knots, so it flaps up now. This VR as well off. So, coming back onto the nav, onto the radial, drifted off a little bit there. Uh, I just cannot work out how to get DME a distance off this. Uh, Satrag, I'm loving how active you've been lately flying sim, so thanks. Also, my thoughts are with my flying crew in the chat. Thank you very much, those kind words. Yes, my thoughts are with them too. Uh, I am back to work in less than two weeks, guys, and it will go back to... Uh, I will try my absolute best to do weekly streams, but um, it will probably not be as often as that. Um, but um, I'll keep the content coming whilst I have any time. Uh, you can use the GPS selecting as a waypoint or direct to get DME, I think it says. Hmm. Well, it seems that I'm cheating here. I think what I'm going to do is just make a right turn and accept the radial anyway. Because <laughs> it's getting to the point now. Anyway, but yeah, I, I don't I haven't used this GPS system. We had it on the Senecas. Uh, you know, there were 430s. Go up to fight level 100 again. Uh, I think they were very similar to this, and I used to know exactly how to work them. But when we did the IR, um, we weren't allowed to use them to navigate. We were always blanked over. We had to use, use the um, HSI and the RMI. So I never really knew how all the f functions for it really. If we go on a heading of around, I don't know, three, three four zero, and I uh, will get the radial. I want to intercept dialed in there. This thing climbs really well though. Performance is great. Uh, so the radial wants to intercept outbound from Glasgow is the two nine eight radial. So let's stick in uh, two. There's 300, 298 about there. I can't show you the, the Navigraph chart seeing, unfortunately. I need to take screenshots of that. But um, the Ombre charts would be quite useful. But we're essentially we're intercepting the Lima 602 airway. Which is starts at Clyde, so it's 298 radio work we're intercepting. Uh, right, we've got to do is we have to take off the checklist, whatever they are. Uh, so, plugins, X checklist, open checklist. Anti ice is required, flaps are up. Oh, yeah, set 1013, 2992. And lights required, need them on. Uh, throttle set for cruise, perfect. Yeah, climbs really quick. Keeping an eye on the HSI then for the radial to come in bounds. Uh, Jason Dicta, does it explain count towards currency training and all for sim time? Um, can't really log it at home, I don't think. Uh, maybe under a um, training environment where it's completely authorised by the authorities to be used as an hour building device, but uh, no, I mean, you can just do it at home and lock them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Sarah AAAA, what is the plugin Explanatus? That blocks the default Explanatus, so when you're listening to it on VATSIM, um, you can hear that one, it doesn't override the other. Right, there's the uh, radio coming in. Cool. 
strobes on this? I don't think I've turned any strobes on all day. The ice of boots. to go. Ah, so if I do this autopilot engage. Autopilot engage. Nav. Uh, oh, we're diving. Why are we diving? No. No, I don't want that. I'm just having a play with this thing. I wanted to try and do that automatic level off at flight level 100, but I think I'll just do it manually. Yeah, let's keep climbing. Out band now. On the radial. And you, yeah, we're not routing direct to um, Barra. We're going to be um, routing towards another Scottish island and then we'll fly direct to the NDB. Right, so if we level off now, press out, engage. Uh, I think that should do it for us. Ah. Strobes are on the circuit breaker above your head. Ooh, outside air temperature. I've just found that as well. Oh, cracky. Probably there. I'm just going to set the power for cruise hold on 150 knots that we want. And I pull the power back. Speed holding. That should do us. Happy days. Oh god, sorry, you're trying to help me about DME boss. DME above Garmin. Above Garmin. <laughs> you guys are screaming at the computer, no doubt. Here. What this? That's just the ident for the DME, isn't it? Track. No, I, I can't remember how to use this. Above Garmin. Next to the main paddle. <laughs> where? Where? Next to the main paddle. Where are you referring to? Distance on the left side of the GPS. That's GPS V-Log. Ooh, what's that? I just realised that's quite cool. Uh, distance on the left hand side of the GPS. Is it here? Where? What? Next to the moment. Are you descending? No, I hope we're not descending. We should be bang at flight level 100, doing 150 knots at cruise speed. In the blue box on GPS. Com V lock. VOR from Glasgow, 298, yes. Or oh, this here. Is that the DM? Oh, sorry. So that's it there. On the screen. I was looking for a button. Okay, got you, got you, got you. So that is the DME registering from DME. So that's not using GPS data. I, I thought that was just GPS data, not actually. Well, it has to be. Has to be off the actual frequency. If I tune something else. Got you guys. Thank you. Ah. Well, fancy that. I presumed everyone here would have been GPS data, not the actual DME from the DME equipment. Got you. Learn something new every day. Yeah, usually the reason I was looking here is because you used to have the DME on the um, nav box here uh, when I was doing my uh, you know, my PPL and stuff. We were using basic instrument navigation. That's what we always used to use. So, as the crow flies, 36 minutes to Barrow. We're going to continue towards... Get rid of this here. Um, so I'll show you on a map kind of where we're going. Um, so we're flying kind of northwest um, towards this island here. Uh, we're going to fly towards a VOR on this island called... 
Uh, Tiri. Now, apologies for completely and probably mispronounced that. I can't even know. I don't even know what the the name is. So we're going out back for Glasgow for a while. We're going to go towards a VR here, and then we're going to turn towards Barra. This is the island of Barra up here, and Barra does have an NDB on it apparently. There's also an RNAV approach to fly. We're going to fly eventually. So yeah, we're going to fly towards a VOR here soon, and then just make that turn towards uh, towards Barra. Cheeky, cheeky there, Nico said. Hopefully the plane doesn't crash on the next landing. It was, it was a, uh, it was an aggressive landing. I'll admit. <laughs> Liam, it's like teaching a seventy-year-old to use a computer, cheeky kid. <coughs> Uh, Matthew Cox, flight level 100, 150 knots is today, uh, general aviation day, yes, well, we're, we're flying at kind of instrument rules, but, uh, yeah, uh, a lot lower. Pronounced t <laughs> Blaze, hopefully the tides are, exactly. I don't think tides are modelled in X-Plane 11. Look at that. Actually going to be in a little bit of IMC today for a change. So usually on a, a turbo prop like this, you can see on the leading edge here, you can actually go outside on this. Uh, you see you've got these boots here, so they use boots pump these boots up to remove any uh, ice build-up. Uh, that uses a source of pneumatic air. We did have them on the Seneca, but they weren't that great. Uh, Martin Jacobs, is this aircraft pressurised? Um, I know it has a certified maximum altitude of 25,000 feet, so yes, I guess it is. But I don't know if this version is, or, or if this one is able to pressurise in expert level. So we're going to bring up the t re VOR in box 2, 177 is the ident. For that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael Schliefk. <laughs> Apologies again for mispronouncing that 10 euro donation. Thank you. I really appreciate appreciate your streams, he said. Well, thank you very much. Glad you enjoyed the content. It's great for me, especially I love doing these sort of things. It sort of brings up a lot of uh, rusty navigational skills. Or IR navigational skills. Ooh, I just changed the wrong box. That I didn't want to do that. 15, 17, 7. Oh, no, 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 no. Excuse Look at that. I'm 15, 4. Look at me messing around here. I've completely thrown myself off. 15-4. Yeah, it's good for me to practice my kind of basic uh, instrument navigation, to be fair. So uh, I'm glad you're continuing to enjoy the content as we're doing some kind of crazy S-turns in the sky. But that's because I turned over the wrong uh, uh, ILS-17-7. There we are. Uh, not ILS, the BOR frequencies. But yeah, thank you very much. Glad you enjoyed the content as still. Uh, thank you for the donation. Very kind. Uh, cool. So yes, we're routing from Glasgow VOR on the HSI. On the CDI, you can see we're now routing two, uh, and it's the same course, so we're, the airway is joined together by these two, uh, two VORs. And now I know I finally have the distance from the, the Glasgow VOR just there, and there you can see the Tango India Romeo VOR anyway, so we're not going quite as the crow flies. Uh, Mafalu4, which X Vision preset? It's one made by one of my Discord members. Which I keep forgetting, because he said I can. I keep forgetting to upload to my Google Drive and sharing the information via my bot. Must do. Hmm. Uh, Danny Asilovs, what's air bleed switches doing on this exact aircraft? I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I yes, it'll be providing the pressurisation for the if. if this model is pressurised, but I'm guessing it is if it goes to 25,000 feet. And then I guess it's also used as a pneumatic source um, for the boots and obviously providing conditioned air for the cabin. Sort of similar, I guess, to a 
another beat as used in the 7 3. Let's do a little flyby. Yeah, it's quite a powerful little aircraft, this one. That was the engine wing took a, took a while to get started, but uh, seems to be running completely fine. <laughs> Greg Scott, is this a test flight before buying one for Alpaca Airlines? Yeah, you can call it that way. <laughs> Uh, Andy Carter, you're looking forward to your Glasgow Barra flight in May. First time in a Twin Otter, 70 quid return. That's pretty decent. Yeah, I think it's a vital um, vital route for the community, really. Flown in this very aircraft, perhaps, maybe. That would be cool. But please, uh, please don't judge what I'm doing here. <laughs> With regards to what your professional pilots will be doing at front. I'm just going to stitch together some routing for us. In a second. Yeah, rugged aeroplane, exactly, yeah, 10 Avco. This is built like a brick house, as you could probably saw earlier when we landed in uh, uh, Glasgow. It's It completely survived. <laughs> I think that's the hardest landing we've ever done. I can't ever remember seeing it saying hard landing before. Interesting. Cool. If you just turned up as well, guys, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button if you are enjoying the content. I see 432 people like it, but only 327 likes. That's to make sure that uh, many people get to watch this video afterwards. See me smashing it into the ground in Glasgow for the banter. And getting the usual weekend comments about how I'm not a pilot. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Do let get some of the banter. Um, tough Bob, do we know if Explainer's model buried in sand and flipped over? No, it doesn't, thankfully. However, I did install the um, Barra freeware scenery available in the store, and for some reason, it didn't quite register all of that as land, so it thought it was water, so occasionally like a wheel would flip over and it would crash the plane. So I found a fix for that online, which I've installed. Um, I did try it just before the stream seemed to have worked, um, so hopefully we won't have any issues. Uh, one of one, Concord at 100,000 subscribers. One of one, I'm hoping to do it a lot sooner than that, as in, in it less than a few months' time. <laughs> but I've said that before. Yeah. By the end of the year, we would have done the Concord Street. Dougal McTavish, hope you're doing well. Uh, went on an eagle spotting trip to Barra years ago. Fantastic. I hope we don't have any eagles in Barra today. Uh, Woody Silbinder, oh man, I thought I missed most of the street because I was off shooting some ILSs in real life. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Sounds a lot more fun, perhaps. <laughs> Glaze Concord to Barry. You having a giraffe, mate? <laughs> Liam T coming with the banter there. 70, 70 quid return and 700 quid for the chiropractor bill. <laughs> uh, Eric, is this the latest Twin Otter with F mod sounds? I purchased it today. It's version 2 of the Twin Otter by. Who are these people that made this? RW Designs. But someone did, it's just default. Someone told me there is a sound pack available, but I haven't installed any uh, sound pack of any description. Right, around halfway now. It's very cloudy now. What is that actual? Actually, there's no METAR in Barra, because obviously it's night time right now, but I did pick up the METAR from an airport called... Uh, Ben Bakula, Ben Bakula, I think that's another sky shine nearby, and that's showing easterly winds, gen gentle easterly winds, 10k, no clouds, 2 degrees, so it should be good. 
Uh, Chris Leinhart thanks for that because I'm going to make a note there. Speed to approach and landing in approach no less than 94 knots. I think we were doing about 60, weren't we? <laughs> oh God, that's probably why we fell out of the sky. No less than 85 knots of flaps 10. Landing flap 20. So you can use flap 20 for landing, 80 knots. Flap full 37.5 VRF is 74 knots. Okay. I think we'll go flap 20, 80 knots. In Barra. Probably want to the slower speed next it's sand, but uh, if we fly 85 knots on final and then flare with flat 20, can't go wrong. Thanks a lot, Chris, for getting that. I should have perhaps done that prior to the stream. <laughs> Come back, a cutting power should be done smoothly in this. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of drag on this aircraft with the flaps out, so if you if you take all the power off, it's going to slow down very quickly. All right, we're going to go towards the Tango India Romeo VR now. We're now 49, 50 miles from Glasgow. Let's go to heading select actually. Seventeen seven. And you're quite right, look, there is the distance for Tango India Romeo, there is the DME. Great. Uh, Martin Scarf, on a normal day in the 7-3, how long are you in the cockpit before you let passengers board? Uh, on the first sector, or we turn up to the aircraft, typically ten minutes, I'd say. Uh, depends if it's running late. Some airports, they send the passengers out before we even get there. Uh, that's nothing to do with the operator or the airline. Uh, they just have... They want to get everyone away on time, but it, typically 10 minutes, I'd say. But I've turned up an aircraft cold and dark and there's passengers waiting. Not necessarily right outside, but they're outside ready to board. If there's no air bridge. And going back and next landing will be phenomenal, I'm sure of it. Mm. <laughs> now, there are runways here, but... I think we're just going to land in some random direction of the beach. In fact, I think there's actually some charts here. Uh, what's the code? Echo Golf Papa Romeo. There is. Look at this. I did look at these on the other No, they turn up here. So there's airport chart. <gasps> Excuse me, guys. <laughs> look, sand. And it is here, but it's not on the scenery. You can't see any of this. You can't see the runway. You can't see any lines. So I'm going to come straight over the airport uh, in this direction. Do it like a little circle and then fly outbound. But look at this. They even have r oh, approaches look to these runways. So you can actually load it up into the GPS and then fly it that way, which would be pretty cool. So I guess, we, well, no. I'd like to go over the top. I think what we'll do is descend visually, go over the top of a thousand feet. Let's do a circle, make sure there's no seals, no uh, nothing on the beach, no, no <laughs> building sandcastles. And then we'll, we'll uh, sort of fly downward and land. We'll do like a little cool orbit. We'll do a little fly plast. But yeah, there is a actual GPS approach for this. We should have bought the Zebo mod, loaded it into the FMC. <laughs> Oh look, I didn't go back to nav, did I? Oops. No, yeah, nav. I think we'll primarily use GPS to get there. <laughs> I swear, don't knock over my sandcastle. <laughs> ah yes, Chris and I, if your speeds don't work out, I know you can blame you now, can't I? I could say, well, Chris said fly this speed. That's why I landed at 600 feet per minute. <laughs> John Newcastle says, does Barra have jetways? Yeah, but Cat 3 ILS. I think it's as uh, simple as it gets, uh, the young Newcastle spotter. To sparse territory now. 
Well, we've got all the way across from Aberdeen, all the way across Scotland now. Approaching the Atlantic soon. I think this is the island of Mull, isn't it, down here? Uh, yeah, I reckon it. this isn't too far away. I used to, go to uh, used to go on holiday a lot around here when I was a kid. Uh, my parents went to a place called Loch Melfort, which isn't too far away from over. I went on holiday there quite a few times. And the Orpho looks really good down here. I think this is the island of Mull. It doesn't look like we're at 10,000 feet, it looks like we're lower. Cool. Uh, Southend Aviation, looking forward to the Just Flight BA146. Um, I don't usually keep up to date with add ons which are coming out soon, but I do think I saw that. Isn't that not going to be for X Plane though? I think that might just be for um, prepared. If I hope that does come to explain, that would be a great aircraft to fly. Anyway, approaching uh, the Tango India Romeo, 24 miles ago. Actually, that's a point. I guess that's slant range, isn't it? So that's actually going to count down to around three miles, or two and a half. I don't know if that actually does work out the. Uh, exact distance over the top of the uh, uh, viewer. Uh, Noah, um, Chirico, if you use the same cost index value on the 737, do you get similar performance results on every flight? No, the higher the cost index, the higher the cruise speed. Um, the descent speed will be higher as well. That's very much based off cost index only, so your descent target speed is based off that. Uh, the higher cost index, the faster you go. Anything up you know, around 100 is as fast as it'll go, basically. Uh, anything less than that, it'll go slower. The climb speed can vary considerably. One of the biggest impacts on your climb speed in the 737 is your top of climb wind. So if you have quite a strong headwind forecast, it'll actually climb quite fast, so it gets there slower because it doesn't want to spend its time up there in the cruise. But if you have a strong uh, tailwind component, it'll climb very slowly to get up there quicker to utilise that tailwind. <laughs> Greg Scott says purchase your flight deck to sim towels for the beach once we've landed. Very good. <laughs> oh, look, I forgot to go to nav again. Look, see, I'm too busy reading the chat and not actually navigating properly. I should think this is the island of Tiri up ahead here. That's the island of Tiri. Let's carry on a little bit towards the VOR still. So much for my pilot monitoring. Uh, no, I mean, if you use the same number, like if you use six, well, no, if you use the same cost index, you, again, your speed will change based on the top of climb wind, but your descent forecast speed will be fixed. Indicated airspeed, that is. William Hall, you did a few hours in the Otter a long time ago. Great aircraft, never had an autopilot that worked, though. <laughs> this one seems to be working okay, albeit quite simple. Just fine. But yeah, this could have been a lot worse, the weather. The weather's been absolutely brilliant all day. Even though my navigating is all over the place. <laughs> Let's get back towards that radial. T re Tyree, Tyree, got you. Tires in laces. Heading towards Tyree, got you. <laughs> Ooh, 
Woody, uh, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think the GNS 530 bases your distance from a radio now on the GPS database, so the range isn't slant range. Okay, well, we'll see you in a second, won't we? Uh, I mean, let's put that scale, oh, there's no range rings really, is there? Now let's, I mean, let's just go direct, let's not worry about that, let's just go direct there now. We'll have a look when we fly right over the top of it. Uh, nav, 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 nav. So we'll see when we get directly over the beacon. We'll see what the range is on the uh, GPS. I'm guessing it is slant range. Uh, Paul Fine, what's your speed doing in miles an hour? I don't have an accurate. Well, no, I have ground speed here, don't I? It's just GPS. Uh, 169 knots, so yeah, it's going to be around 180, 190 miles an hour. Flight level 360, just finished my four sim sessions on the 737 for my time rating. I'm destroyed. Today I performed runaway stab edge of fire, she said, lovely. Um, please, my retreat. Well, firstly, good luck on your tight rating. And uh, secondly, remember that anything you see here is not to be used on your tight rating or to be applied to the real aircraft. This is purely for entertainment. And oh boy, this has been an entertaining stream so far. <laughs> oh, look, there is Tybury Airport. I'm guessing the VOR is on the uh, airfield. I didn't even know there was anything here. Uh, there it is. That is the very VOR I should think we are flying uh, towards. Be cool. <laughs> Octavio, my captain, what is your favourite destination? I've asked the pilot once and he told me home. <laughs> Unsmiley face. I'm afraid I can see where your friend's coming from. <laughs> After especially a long, long week. Uh, but no, if, uh, if, uh, if I was to fly tomorrow, I'd like to fly to my old base, uh, Alicante, a lot. I really enjoy going there. That was my first ever base years ago. Um, and uh, Malta, quite enjoy the destination. Some of the Canary flights. I like a bit of a, I like a bit of variant, variation, really. Sometimes I like doing a few more sectors a day. Sometimes I like a longer flight. Here is Tyree. And we are closing on quickly towards Barra. A little bit of destinations. Yes, I always forget to publicise that. Nightbot has just posted a very useful map. Every single stream I have done to date, post stream, I always update that map. So if you're perhaps new to the channel, you can see perhaps a particular airport you want to know if I've flown into. You can use that search for the four letter code, three letter code. And uh, you never know your favourite destination we might have already flown into. So it only takes me about a minute to update that after the stream. So I always keep that updated. I think you might be right. Um, I think that might go all the way to zero. We shall see. Uh, Campus 608, can you fly the DC-3 again? Maybe up to Canada for the Ice Pilot Special. Yes, we uh, nearly jumped into DC-3 again for today's stream, but uh, no doubt we'll uh, fly that aircraft again very soon. neck of the woods here. I can safely state that I have never been to Tyree. It's good fun doing some of these uh, visual flights close to the ground. What on earth is that? The military are here. Cancel the stream guys, we're going to be landing on the aircraft carrier. <laughs> It's so tempting, isn't it? <laughs> so tempting, so tempting. 
<laughs> oh, don't make me. Anyway. I had to go straight over the VOR. And that DME distance, yeah, one, one mile. Yeah, that's definitely uh, not including slant range. It's counting right down. Right, let's go heading select. <laughs> Touching on the carrier. Is she in your inner devil? Ah, guys, let me know in chat if prior to Barra you'd like me to do a touch of uh, a touch of God the aircraft carrier. <laughs> oh dear! All right then, <laughs> come on then. <laughs> Let's do it. It's a forty thousand stream special. Let's not forget and try and do it. An aircraft carrier touch and go. How could we not? <laughs> Put danger zone on in the background. Go on then, guys. Touch and go on the aircraft carrier. And then we'll go to Barra. Thumbs up if you want to see me do an aircraft carrier touch and go. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to have to change the video description everything. Not every day that you do this. All right. Well, let's keep it on our sights. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> oh dear. So, I hope it doesn't have some sort of arrestor cable system. But we're going down as quick as we can. I've got idle. I can probably get flaps out as well. Hopefully, it won't go too far there. <laughs> Torsion Swartz, five dollars, touch and go. <laughs> To be fair, if I was at the Zebo mods uh, doing a proper stream, going all serious with the briefings, I probably wouldn't bother. But no, it's a it's a special stream in the Dash 8. And why not land in the, in the aircraft carrier? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> look, look at the speed it's going. Oh, we'll probably end up in America. Oh dear. So we'll keep it in the same point of the windscreen. Brace, 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 brace. Oh no. So not only am I struggling to fly this aircraft in zero wind, perfect weather, <laughs> landing at 500 feet per minute now, you want me to land it on a moving object? <laughs> this could be awful. Oh, did I say Dash 8 as well? Oh no. I keep calling this flipping thing the Dash 8, the Twin Otter, sorry. You want me to fly the Twin Otter? into US Alpaca, USS Alpaca. What else is out there? There's all sorts out here, the boats. Crikey. Well, we're only, look, we're only going to be 20 miles away. Don't forget to extend the hook. <laughs> Crikey, this is going to get a lot more interesting. I honestly didn't plan this. I had no idea there'd be an aircraft carrier here. <laughs> I know they go around in XP11. There's a little track deviation. <laughs> we'll switch over this side now. CI is watching you, I guess. Three dots there. <laughs> Good luck, Katie. You might need it. The carrier has its own ILS frequency. Oh, crikey. Yeah, I don't know how these guys do it. Crikey, it's fully loaded as well. Right, out of 5,000 feet. <laughs> I thought it was meant to be a serious flight simming channel. <laughs> Never mind. We all have a bit of fun now and again. And again, I do play video games sometimes to stream it. Right. 
reckon if we do a left turn all the way around by the time we get down to 2,000 feet we'll be nicely lined up on final. Who needs Ro uh, Royal International Air Tattoo 2020 says self head Aviation? Absolutely. I'm going to have to change the uh, title of this stream, I think. So, can a 737 captain not land on a beach, can land on an aircraft carrier? Oh, look at that. Nice bit of drag, 160 knots. Oh, look, they've got frigates afterwards as well, just to shoot us down if we uh, have bad intentions. Where's it gone? Oh, there it is. Right now to two and a half thousand feet. Goosebo, I can't believe you've been sweated to doing this. I know. <laughs> we should never seen it. <laughs> oh dear. Greg Swap, remember to take a screenshot for the thumbnail. Oh, I'll try and remember. Oh, that's in a good position anyway. Let's just hope it doesn't fly into the ship. Yeah, this could be the first ever X-Plane 11 incident. It could be. Anyway, I, I'm a bit worried. Oh, I'm already on final here. I might have to get a bit more drag out, but lose a bit more speed. Um, is it going to use some sort of arrestor hook to stop me, though? Or is that is that modelled in some sort of way? <laughs> what, what I hope your employer's not winning. Awesome. Well... Thank you very much for the donation. It doesn't matter. These are only for entertainment anyway. So, uh, regard regarding that, doesn't really matter. It's a bit of fun. Right, I think we need to start slowing down here. What's the uh, uh, minimum flap extension speed? No idea. Let's do some more S-turns. <laughs> right. I need to get some more speed. I'm just using a bit. I might just slip it in a little bit here. Just excuse me, a bit of rudder. Oh, thank you very much for the second donation, whoever that is as well. Ice fire, two pound, three quarter mile out. Call the ball. Thank you very much. All this uh, banter related or, or uh, terminology related to uh, aircraft carriers. All right, I'm going to have to really slow down. I'm going a little bit too fast here. So what I'm going to do is a little orbit. Let's do an orbit at 900 feet. Add a bit of power here. I'm going to fully fine on the prop. Approach from the right hand side of the ship, not the wake. No, I don't have a clue. Oh no, that's a storm order. Let's go a little bit faster. I need to get used to going around at 100 knots here. God, my speed is really low. This thing, look at that. I've got no flaps, but it's really slow turning. So I think I've got a bit of the uh, back of the drag curve there. Let's get some flaps. Let's go for flap 20. Because I think the others have way too much drag. Alright, let's level off at a thousand. Right, oh, look at that. That worked out quite nicely. Right, I'm going to do around 85 knots for this approach. Trim. Yeah, I'll imagine the checks are complete then. <laughs> Am I going to actually bring it to quite a bit of a full stop first? We're on final then. I can't believe you guys. Look at this peer pressure you put me under. Your f flight path is looking strange on Project Fly. Am I too high? Am I too low? No idea. God, that ship is going fast though. That's one thing for sure. Right, I'll keep the runway and the aiming point in the same position. Oh god. Right, that centre line. See where the ship's moving in that direction, where the runway is. God, these boys that do this, hats off to them. <laughs> ship's doing 45 knots. Oh, there's a helicopter flying there as well. I feel like a helicopter coming in at this speed. Right, there we go. Oh, come on. Oh, minus 240, as if. Right, let's get out of here <laughs> before we get shot up. <laughs> All right, flaps coming up. Don't think that's very safe the way I departed either. <laughs> right, let's carry on with the rest of the plan. 
I don't think that was minus 240. You can jog on. That was a button. <laughs> right, let's go to Barra. Flaps are up. We'll go to 3,000. Quick, feel like there's a Sam coming towards me now. Let's bring the props back to 7,000 RPM. Superb. And uh, trimming for 120 knots. Well, that was a that was a fun detour. Let's uh, activate that route direct to uh, Sumberg. I can't believe you made me do that. What peer pressure? And uh, yeah, let's just navigate using the little plain old GPS. Set this to 3000. This thing climb, it is so fast. Right, level off there. Trim, trim, trim. A little bit of turbulence here, it's hard to tell. Right, heading. Oh, can't get this thing trimmed out. Sorry if you're at the back there, making you feel uh, a little bit sick. Uh, let's get the autopilot back in. And let's go. Oh, what's it doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. It's automations all over the place. I just took the autopilot on or off, and then it just very aggressively pitched up. Let's just go to 3000. Let's sort this out. We're only 10 minutes now from uh, Barra. I don't know what happened there. I put the autopilot in and it just pitched up crazy. There's a little bit of turbulence here. It's probably because I was uh, shot with some like firearms and some damage to the aircraft from the from the aircraft carrier. Flaps are up. Yep. A little bit of turbulence. Let's try again. So, altitude heading. Right, there we go. Perfect. Happy days. Hope you enjoyed that anyway. <laughs> Something a little bit different. Uh, but a streak is over. <laughs> What's it? Yeah, minus 200. I think that was a little bit harsh. Was it that much? <laughs> Chris, I like your great. Thank you. 553 is not three, only 395 likes. That's nowhere near enough for uh, landing on an aircraft carrier. It, <laughs> absolutely no plan. Oh dear. Right, nearly done, guys. A little bit more power up here. Yeah, a little bit of turbulence. So you can see that the autopilot trim down, trim up, trim down. It's constantly making inputs here. Oh, I have to see the replay, of course. Yeah. I won't do that all the way from some, um, not something, that's Shetland Eyes, all the way from Barrett, because that will probably cause the, the sim to crash, because you have to reload different areas and stuff, but uh, that, I'm afraid, is that, you saw the approach of landing, <laughs> you can do it for whatever you, you want to do. Uh, Dad, it's thank you for the touch you go, you're most welcome. Bit of banter, wasn't it? I swear, the hard landing was just practice for the carrier, absolutely. Cool. And we're now routing. Look, look at our. There we are, look. <laughs> so we were, we were meant to be going from here to here. Instead, we did this. A little orbit, another tight orbit. Look at the aircraft carrier westbound very quickly. And there we are going towards uh, Sumbug ourselves. So we'll go over the airfield um, at around, I don't know, a thousand feet or so. And then we'll just position over the bay and then come in uh, land in in any direction. I know there's runways here, but they're not, um, they're not, um, 
written out on the uh, add-on I got, anyway, the freeware add-on, or the default. Uh, Patrick Haynes, would you ever do domestic flights in the US on X-Plane? Yeah, we do need to go back to the US. I've only ever done one stream in the US, believe it or not. Well, two if you include DC3, but we did go to the Zebo mod and flew from... Um, uh, where did we go? Uh, Phoenix to San Diego and back. Uh, I did have an email from the chap who runs Pilot Edge as well. He wants me to come and have a look at the network, which I will do at some point, but I had a few things to go on with this week. Uh, but yeah, we'll go back to America for sure. <laughs> it should have stayed on the aircraft car and gone to America. Uh, Stephen Jacobs, how are we doing for fuel? We filled up uh, right at the start of the day and I haven't put anyone there. We've got loads. Look, we've got 900 kilo or 900 pounds. Look, 1800 pounds of fuel, which I think in this aircraft is more than enough. Alright, what can I see dead ahead then? I think where those boats are, I think that's the uh, airport here. Five minutes to go. <laughs> Alright, I'll should I change the video title to can land a twin otter on an aircraft carrier and a beach. <laughs> loop the loop of the twin otter. What are you guys turning this stream into? <laughs> I'm sure this aircraft could loop. We have done a loop the loop once. You did force me to do it. We did a loop the loop in the uh, the Robin, didn't we, on the way back from Courchevel? <laughs> No, no more, but Daniel, I'll trust you to give me the peer pressure. We're not doing a loop in the, uh, in the, uh, the dash, and the twin otter. I'm all done. <laughs> Six minutes we'll be touching down in, uh, in Barra. A little bit up here. Right, so, uh, Let's remind ourselves, where are we on this chart? You can't see us actually, but we're coming in uh, from the south. Uh, so we're coming in, in this direction. So we're going to fly kind of towards the bay here. Might just go right over the airfields, and then we'll turn eastbound, and then land uh, on the westy runway, runway 29 or 25. Uh, Chris Leinhardt, looks like the flap settings worked out better. Yeah, it was a lot easier to control than before. Um, I think that was all my problem. Oh, uh, mistakes on the first approach. Uh, thank you very much to Patrick Haynes, who's just joined as a member. Glad you're enjoying the content. And I hope you will enjoy all your exclusive members only content, which you'll uh, we'll see through our members only Discord. Thank you very much, and welcome. Yeah, once you've got this aircraft set up, though. It's, it's pretty easy to fly. I mean, I'm not properly monitoring any of this. I don't exactly know what power settings I want for the cruise, uh, RPMs for approach and takeoff, not sure about, and the cruise as well. Uh, uh, this is not... Scenery has not worked here. I'm looking here. Yeah, it's gone back. I was having so many issues with this scenery earlier. I had the patch installed, which which basically fixed it. But it's oh, I've got this. They're basically the default sand. It looks like again, uh, which is really annoying because I had this nice look at the patch. Like you see, it's how it's a different colour. That's uh, not worked. It's like uh, the tile's gone basically. It's overwritten the tile. That's really annoying because I had the tile there, so it looked actually like proper beach. Oh well. Right, anyway, I think what we'll do, I think uh, let's do hand flying for the rest of the day. Let's disconnect this 30, all now. 40, 30, 20, right, is disconnected. Uh, thank you very much to Sleepless Devil, who's just donated $10. Very kind. He says, good luck. Well, thank you very much. I mean, a lot of luck in this stream today. Uh, after the approach into Glasgow, uh, the, well, the tyres had to be replaced. Uh, a kind of impromptu diversion into a, a US aircraft carrier, which went quite well. And then uh, we'll now try and uh, butter it into uh, barrel. We'll see what goes on. But no, unfortunately, 
this has not installed correctly. That's the that's the kind of like terminal, and this is all the beach here, and I've got this boring straight line, so I need to land on this bit here, basically. This was an ortho tile, but it, it's not worked. Right, let's go to idle. Uh, increase the RPM. Maybe the time is coming, maybe. I don't think that's what but it could have done. Yeah, this isn't worked. This is like default. Uh, you can see here's the ortho, but it's given us this kind of slab of crap, basically. But uh, that's a shame. Let's trim for 100 knots. So we're going to fly over the uh, airport. Again, we'll use that flap 20. Again, I have no idea if that's correct, guys. Flap 20 at uh, 85 knots. Let's go down to around 1,000 feet. <clears throat> We're going to kind of land in this direction here. So if you look at the airport, it's sort of like this runway 25. So we're landing here. We're coming in from the south here. Southeast, kind of routing like this at the moment. Uh, Orbex for the win, yeah. I should have got the Orbex scenery, yeah. I'm sure that looks very good. Right, there's a thousand feet. Let's do a little buzz of the terminal. There is the view from the uh, one of the runways, which is programmed. And that's where we'll park in a second. Let's go find this runway 25 as best as we can. <laughs> so I think if we fly in this direction, and then we'll kind of like just head in and we'll just land on the beach. Unfortunately, can't really see anywhere where the runways are. I think it's just beach there anyway. Anyway, I think it's just beach there anyway. I don't think there's any lines for the runway. No idea. I just maintain about 100 knots, a thousand feet. And that's it. Get your landing rates in. There's some cars on the road. What an interesting stream this has been. <laughs> right, I reckon that should do us. Let's take a... Let's go straight away to 20 degrees notch of flaps. There we are. Go to around 90 knots for this turn. Start descending. Again, I'm not really landing in any particular direction. I'm just going to try and land on the beach. There it is. Oh, I, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to reset the flipping local pressure. I was wondering why the altitude was a bit lower. That's really embarrassing. Right, no idea what the local Q&H is uh, about that. <laughs> Very out of practice. Look at it going way too slow again. Uh, let's get that speed back up to 85 knots. Really clot. Look at the attitudes are really weird compared to like the 7.3. It's like a nose down attitude. Right, that'll do. If we just land in this direction towards the terminal, we can't be too far off. There was a little hill there. Let's try not to land on that. Let's take a bit of power off. I know it's runway 25. We're coming in around 23. No, no problem. Wow, I'm going to absolutely try and butter this. <laughs> right, let's 
take the power off slowly. I don't think it's completely flat. <laughs> Holding it off. Holding it off. Holding it off. Oh, that's not too bad. 146. Acceptable. <laughs> well, there's reverses. I don't think I really need it. A nice smooth landing into uh, Barra. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the only commercial airport which has a beach. Fantastic. Right, there's back to a uh, idle reverse. And we'll just uh, roll on our way up to the, uh, the terminal. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Did we let it bow on the moon to Simon Sandstorm? Good question. <laughs> ah, there we are. I don't think, I think that's modelled as dirt in x -Plane. Look, Let's get right outside the terminal. No idea where they park. How about there? We should do us. Right, flaps are up. Parking brake is set. Um, and checklist, what was it? Oh, let's try and half guess this then. So, probably, uh, what was it? Fuel, no, feather the props, wasn't it? That's what they wanted us to do. No, that's the throttle. There we are. Let's feather those, fuel off. Uh, let's open the doors. Nice, nice sounds. Let's get the rear doors open, and uh, we we'll then complete the rest of the checklist accordingly. But we'll, uh, I think we'll call it a day on this stream because I'm quite tired, especially after the impromptu aircraft carrier landing. But here we are. We've made it nicely and safely into Barra. Uh, what a stream! That was awesome. What a day. Uh, starting off in uh, Aberdeen, uh, then to Glasgow, where we did a 500 foot per minute landing. Uh, then an aircraft car, and then Barra. <laughs> Three landings in one day. Oh, I've been absolutely tested to the uh, absolute limit here. But uh, yeah, very enjoyable, guys. I very much enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Um, got some of the landing rates in, did we? We did. Terminal, you mean shed, localizer alive, brilliant. Landing rate, nosedive, fantastic. Oh, even Mariana was coming in with the banter. Disappointed, she said. Oh, that's a... Just came back to see you smash it. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I'll be downstairs. Yeah, she is sadistic, Timothy. You got it quite right. Absolutely. 16 second float. Nice, exactly, Tony. You get away with all sorts here. Uh, brilliant. Well, let's have a look at the replay of that. Uh, the aircraft carry-on, I won't do, because that will mess around with X-Plane 11. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll enjoy uh, that buttery approach and landing here. Uh, into Barra. Right, let's uh, get ourselves into the cockpit. I hope it recognises one of the runways. Let's have a look here. Oh, it has. Not quite near the runway, but I don't think I was too far off where the threshold was. <laughs> let's view it from here anyway. You won't see me doing too many more streams landing on a beach. Yeah, it was a bit of a float. I held a little bit too high. I should think that's down to my 7.3 experience. <laughs> it's classic for anyone that's flying an aircraft where the, the eye point's a little bit higher holding it off. We could have plopped it down. Yeah, that's not too bad. Quite close to a tail strike, though. Completely no idea if that approach was correct or uh, at the right speed. Bear. You must bear with me if I've done that all completely wrong. Let's have a little look from here as well. As close to tail strike. <laughs> no problem at all. Awesome stuff. Brilliant. Guys, thank you very much to everyone that turned up today for this uh, sort of 40,000 subscribers special. Um, wasn't sure what I was going to do at the beginning of the day, but I think what we did today was uh, very fun nonetheless. Um, especially going into the aircraft car. Uh, apologies for my landing into Glasgow as before. Are very hard, but uh, no doubt I'll get a few comments in, in the next few days regarding my lack of experience and the fact I'm definitely not a real world pilot. I do find that quite amusing. Though. Um, regarding next live stream, unfortunately, nothing this weekend. This is why I stream this evening. It's going to go to a stag do. I'm not going to say where in case my friend is actually watching this, he doesn't know uh, where we're going. So uh, it'll be very enjoyable for myself. 
but I will get one more stream done, I hope, before I go back to work, which is just under two weeks' time. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much to everyone that donated today. Uh, don't forget, just before you log off, to uh, smash that thumbs up button if you're enjoying the content for more Flight Deck Sim stuff. Again, this was a, not a, such a serious stream. We'll get to, uh, back to doing some more proper instrument flying in a wide body jet uh, or a, a twin engine multi jet aircraft very soon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon. Have a great evening, and bye bye from me.